from 60 witnesses that the jury heard over the course of three months. That, and you have to understand human nature. Randolph McLaughlin, a law professor at Pace University in New York, and a trial lawyer who has handled wrongful death cases against police, says people do not want to believe that police officers do bad things. Society gives them the benefit of the doubt. It's very difficult to indict a police officer. Especially the, you know, respectables who get called in to these grand jury uh, assignments. Now, it's certainly true that uh, the grand jury pool is the same as the pettit jury pool in that in any state, you know, they're probably pulling the the names from driver's licenses or registered voters. Usually it's right. one or the other or both. I think it's both in New, New Hampshire. New Hampshire pulls from both. And so obviously, you know, you're going to hit random people. But it would seem to me that, uh, the, you know, the respectables, if you will, the people who are more likely to believe in the police and to... Those are the people that aren't going to come up with some weird BS excuse, excuse. to get out of it. Exactly. Those are the people who are going to report dutifully to the courthouse for their civic obligation of jury duty, as opposed to, you know, having to go to work and trying to come up uh, with an excuse. More coming up here in moments on Free Talk Live. Mom gives us our own special Christmas ornament every year. This year, she gave me one with a picture of me playing soccer. It's my most favorite ornament ever. Each Christmas, moms everywhere create the wonderful tradition of placing special ornaments on the Christmas tree. This year, you can make your tradition even more special with unique, customizable ornaments from personalcreations.com. They have an amazing selection of adorable ornaments to choose from. You can even design the characters to look just like members of your family, including your pets. And you can customize each ornament with any name you'd like to make them truly one of a kind. Radio listeners, you can get a special deal. For a limited time when you order select ornaments on the site, you'll get a second one absolutely free. That's two amazing ornaments for the price of one. And personalization is included. But hurry because this exclusive offer ends this Friday at midnight. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to personalcreations.com. Click on the orange star in the top right corner and enter the secret code 6767. That's personalcreations.com, secret code 6767. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth slide into a recession or at worst depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. If you're doing something very interesting, or you have a reputation for doing something very interesting, yeah, then you become more interesting to track. I love how dramatic you are. Then you become... Oh, my. Well, (laughs) I worked in uh, uh, (laughs) psychotropic medic... Psychotropic substances when I was working for the CIA. Yeah. So you were testing what LSD or that sort of thing or what? <laughs> hey, you think I'm gonna stay on the air? You've already told us you worked for the CIA. <laughs> you couldn't possibly find out who I am. <laughs> the way that you speak and and your tone of voice, you sound like Cruella Deville. I just <laughs> I've noticed it from the moment you got on the phone. <laughs> I even look like her. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the. Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE. As protests continue all around in different parts of the country over police violence, Daryl is telling us about how it's easier to indict a ham sandwich than it is a police officer. Looking at the grand jury process, we're going to get a little deeper into the Ferguson uh, case in yes. this story that you have. And where is the source on this again? Uh, this is USA Today. USA Today. All right. So we'll uh, we'll get it back into that here in a moment. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, plus, you can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is is lrn.fm now uh you know these protests are happening and i think it's you know i think it's good that people are protesting i I can't oppose the idea of getting out into the streets and getting your ideas out there but you know like the occupy protests that went on three years ago now what where does it really go to what what comes out of these protests the i think it's the alexander haig quote from the 19 i don't know if it was the 80s when he said it but uh, the, to, to paraphrase, I don't have it in front of me. Let them protest so long as they pay their taxes. Right. So as long as you know people keep paying into the system to support this aggression by the police, uh, then it's going to continue. It doesn't matter how loud you shout. Sure, you can get out in the streets and shout loud enough to where some politicians will pretend to do something about it. Like, well, we're going to form a task force. We're going to form an all-star blue ribbon panel. And we are going to investigate this, and we're going to tr- figure out what to do. And then, you know, they form some sort of citizens' review board. This is usually the process of what happens in cities where they, they should just brutality. call all of these the uh, citizens reviewing the actions of police boards. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess in some cases they're citizens, and in other cases they might just be government bureaucrats. I don't know what the makeups of of all of the boards are around the the country, but. They're supposed to be given some level of independent ability to investigate, and, you know, does anything really ever come out of those? I suspect not so much. So let's go on, though, with uh, your story, Daryl. Yeah, so the article continues. He says, and then there's the evidence itself. The jury heard more than 70 hours of testimony that included often contradictory eyewitness statements. It's in Ferguson. Clinical autopsy reports, police radio reports, Scores of photographs and diagrams of the crime scene and complicated forensic evidence about gun residue and bullet trajectory. Wilson's testimony was among the most riveting. In almost 100 pages of testimony, Wilson gave a vivid and detailed narrative of how Brown punched him, went for his gun, ran away, then ran back at him full charge. Several witnesses corroborated Wilson's account that Brown charged him, Others, however, said that Brown stood still with his hands out in front of him as if motioning Wilson to stop. At least one witness said Brown was stepping back with his hands out at the time he was shot. Dorian Johnson, a friend of Brown's, who was with him during the altercation, contradicted Wilson when he testified that the officer was the aggressor when he grabbed Brown by the shirt at his car. He said Wilson and Brown argued, but his friend never went for the gun. He said Brown ran away after Wilson shot him and never charged him. Hmm. Witnesses, however, then disagreed about what occurred at the start of the altercation when Brown was next to the police car. Some said they saw his arms moving in and out and thought he was struggling to break free from Wilson's grasp. Others said that they saw the same thing but concluded that he was throwing punches at the officer. Some of the evidence included highly technical discussions about the difference between gunpowder soot and residue and the distinction between entry and exit wounds. 
Put together, all the evidence served to overwhelm and even confuse the grand jury, according to some legal experts. And they question why the St. Louis prosecuting attorney, Robert McAuliffe, chose to do it that way. Ben Trackenberg, a University of Missouri law professor, stopped short of saying that McAuliffe laid out an overwhelming amount of evidence to keep the grand jury from charging Wilson. He did say, I'm not prepared to say it's improper, but it's certainly unusual. It certainly looks like he put... Is the suggestion that he overwhelmed them with evidence? Yes. It certainly looks like he put on a much greater amount of evidence than what we're used to. Hmm. Normally, Trackenberg says, a grand jury sees and hears much less evidence before being asked to vote on an indictment. He says in many cases, a grand jury can see evidence in just a few minutes and then be asked to take a vote. And how long did this take? With months. The one? Three months. Wow, that's crazy. Yes, they spent three months on this one case. He says the reason that they're given, you know, in most cases, just a few minutes to look at the evidence is because the prosecutors only have to show that there is probable cause. They don't have to try the entire case. Right. That's the point of going to trial is that's when the trial actually happens. The grand jury is just supposed to give a nod to, oh, okay, it looks like you got enough to get this guy. On the other hand, kind of prosecutors bringing what they consider a weak case before a grand jury might present more evidence because they could... That could save them from losing in court. Trackenberg says no one wants to get an indictment that you just barely get because then you get smacked around in the real trial. He noted that the grand jury saw evidence that helped bolster Wilson's versions of events, but not to secure an indictment. Joel Schultz, who is a retired police chief of Adams State University in Colorado, who is also a consultant and trainer, defended the prosecutor's decision to provide the grand jury with all of the evidence. If McAuliffe had not presented exhaustive evidence, critics would have accused him of withholding information that could have affected the case. Schultz said, It was not a terribly unusual kind of investigation or hearing. Police officers can use deadly force when they or someone else face a threat of death or serious physical injury. Terrence Dwyer from the Western Connecticut well, State University. From what we've seen, it's uh, police can use deadly force if they just feel scared. Yes. Says that from what he has seen of the testimony, Wilson was justified. He says a lot of people are hung up on the fact that Brown was unarmed, but that doesn't factor into the criteria. Wilson told the jury that Brown punched him repeatedly and feared another blow would kill him or knock him out. Pace law professor McAuliffe, who we mentioned earlier, said that Wilson had an alternative course of action after Brown ran 8 to 10 feet away from the vehicle. He had already called for backup, but then made the decision to get out of his car and give chase. This was after he'd been shot once, correct? This, Th this after was after Brown, Brown had been shot. Had been shot and then ran away. Mm -hmm. And Wilson had already called for backup and then got out of his car and chased after Brown. Uh, McAuliffe, or rather, McLaughlin says such a high-profile case should have gone to trial in an open court so that everyone could see the evidence as it was presented. They wanted to do this in secret, and I don't trust any process done in secret. Hmm. The grand That's jury process presents a conflict of interest for prosecutors who have to work day in and day out with police to make their cases stick. Prosecutors may not present their strongest case against an officer as a result, and prosecutors rarely point. it they rarely interrupted Wilson during his testimony. Toll free number tonight is 855 450 free. So just suggesting here that the prosecutors are doing everything they can to protect the police. Yes. Which of course makes total sense. 855 450 free. That's the toll free number. Could there be an independent prosecutor? One who's, you know, not so tied to the police within this crazy system. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now. Because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. 
Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-881-1075. In clinical trials, the ingredient in SuperBeta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate Free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-881-1075. That's 1-800-881-1075. Call 1-800-881-1075. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, Government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. <laughs> This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Hello Americans, it's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more on your federal or state income taxes, I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. The IRS with their Fresh Start initiative is offering more flexible terms to Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. They can help you lift your wage garnishments, stop bank levies, and put your tax problem behind you once and for all. If you owe tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to the IRS or state, our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, we can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your debt for far less than what you owe. 800-978-3909. 800-978-3909. 800-978-3909. 800-978-3909. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that you will find there completely free. With you tonight, Ian here. Daryl. And Danica. And want to tell you about what I think will be a pretty neat holiday season gift, especially for young people in your life. It's called In Freedom's Cause, and it's audio theater. It's very, very cinematic the way it's made. It's got actually uh, people that you might recognize from movies in it, including Joanne Froggett of downtown uh, Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd from Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keen, 
Haynes from Chronicles of Narnia and James Cosmo of Braveheart. Again, it's called In Freedom's Cause, and it's one of the greatest stories of the struggle for freedom in recorded history. That is the story of William Wallace. It's like Braveheart, only historically accurate. Children in your life will love this. It also comes with a study guide and is a real crash course in the struggle for freedom. Go to infreedomscause.com. There's a special offer for Free Talk Live listeners. That's you. Use coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live, and get a family four-pack of CDs for half price. Uh, I've listened to the entirety of In Freedom's Cause, and I have to say it's very well produced, and I think that uh, the children in your life will really appreciate it. Especially, I, th- I think especially boys, but uh, it's pretty well produced, and I think it'll capture any of their attention. InFreedomsCause.com. The coupon code is FTL. It gets you the family four-pack of CDs for half off. Again, the code FTL at InFreedomsCause.com. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Police violence protests all around the country. People are upset at the lack of indictments against police. Daryl, you were sharing with us some details from the Ferguson, uh, I guess, the grand jury presentation, the right. uh, details of what evidence the claims that the police and the prosecutors were presenting to the grand jury, which ultimately they did not return an indictment against Officer Darren Wilson in that case, which, by the way, subsequently I heard that Darren Wilson uh, resigned from the police department. Yes, he did. Yes. And has also been given over $500,000 by people who apparently support uh, police violence. And so he's, you know, doing pretty good, all things considered. How long was he in the force for, do you know? I am not sure about that. I wonder if he's able to collect a pension as well. I don't think so. He looks I, I pretty young. He, he looks he, pretty he's young. He's only 28. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he probably wasn't there for too long. He just so, didn't know what kind of payout he got. No pension, but uh, 500 grand in mm-hmm. one fell swoop. That's, uh, you know, not too shabby. Not too bad. So I found a statistic that in 2010, according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, U.S. attorneys prosecuted 162,000 federal cases only 11 of them wound up not getting an indictment. Hang on. That's U.S. attorneys, meaning t- attorneys federal working cases. for the federal government. Okay. So only, you know, th- this statistic only covers federal cases. Right. 162,000 in lot. 2010, <laughs> only 11 wound up not being indicted. So wow. they, they did the math, and that's 0.0679%. Yeah, I've always wondered what it's like to be on the inside of a grand jury. Like, what is what are the things that you are told? What is the you need to indict this person? Here's the reason why. Okay, vote. Yeah, well, I mean, have you ever been on a grand jury? Or are you speculating? I'm speculating based on you know mostly the information from that other article that said in most cases, yeah, you're given just a couple of minutes and then asked to vote. So, and based on it- that. It, you're being told, here's a bad guy, here's what he did, here's the reason to indict and vote. Now, isn't it um, a majority of grand jurors is what it takes to bring the indictment? That I am not sure. I believe it is. Like, for instance, when you're at a criminal trial, you have to get, in my, in my understanding, in a criminal trial, it has to be 100% of the jury has to agree to convict but one person can hang that jury. So if you're on a jury, on a pettit jury, if you're there at a criminal trial uh, and you vote not guilty, that will hang the jury and then the prosecution can decide to bring the same charge again. So oh. hanging a jury doesn't prevent the charges from being brought again. They can keep trying the person over and over well, and again. Well, and also failing to get an indictment with a grand jury does not prevent the charge from being brought again. Really? Yes, because the real trial only begins after the indictment and you go to court. So it's not, you know, the the double jeopardy doesn't kick in once a grand jury hears the evidence. Wait a minute. I don't understand what you're telling me. Recap that again. Because the grand jury in Ferguson and in New York, they... You know, there there was a grand jury that heard evidence and they refused to press a charge. They right. they refused to indict. You can't bring a so charge double, after that, though, right? They were never officially charged. No, maybe I was maybe I was mis misstating. You, you were saying at a pettit jury, yeah. if they fail to convict there, they can bring it because back because of a hanged jury. 
Correct. They could bring it back. But if the jury acquits, they can't. That's correct. But that would require all 12 of the jury to acquit. Right. And what I was saying is with a grand jury, just because a grand jury fails to indict someone, they can still, the prosecutor can attempt to get an indictment again later. Through a different grand jury or through the same grand jury? Well, generally, it's through a different grand jury. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, So there's no double jeopardy regarding grand juries is what you're saying. Right, because the charge hasn't actually been Been brought brought officially. they could lower to a misdemeanor and then not have to go through the grand jury, right? Because it's only for felonies. I believe grand juries are only for felonies. Yeah. So if they if they kept running up against the grand jury that for whatever reason would refuse to indict, they could just lower the charge to a misdemeanor and you know knock it as many right. years. Right, but in, in prison. the case of a police officer, most of the time the prosecutor's not going to do that. Oh no way! Of course not. That they'll wind up. You know, I, I this think, prosecutor only brought this evidence out of you know having to do it. He was right. told to in order to try to calm things down. Uh, I think in the Garner situation and the Brown situation that the families will wind up filing civil suits and of course you know civil suit you're not being held criminally sure negligent but i i do believe that there will be civil suits and i expect the civil suit would be against the department as opposed to the officer because the officer will likely be found to be immune from probably which is also a typical result in these uh, in these cases. So you can share your thoughts with us here. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. The uh, grand jury process. I just wonder what it's like to be in there because I know that these, like when you're in in court, it's an intimidating process. I mean, when you're there as a defendant, it's intimidating. But even the people who are not there as defendants, even the people who are there. Just supporting someone, you know, right. mom or the wife or, you know, whoever it is that's there to support the person. Usually it's just one person. If anyone comes to support someone in court, it's usually just one person, uh, whoever really cares about that person the most. Here in New Hampshire, it's different. We'll have, do- you know, a half a dozen to <laughs> dozens of people showing up to support activists, depending on the size of the case and the importance and all of that. So it's everything's completely different here. But, you know, in the average courtroom... There's silence. Nobody ever talks. There's whispering maybe that that goes on. Uh, Even outside of the courtroom, there's whispering and silence. Nobody talks at a regular voice to another person, Just even just waiting in the lobby. There's just this kind of hanging dread, I guess, in the air in courthouses. Right. And so you can imagine that that same, I guess, mentality— applies in the grand jury process probably you know where people are very reticent to kind of buck the system and you know they don't want to step out of line and well if the prosecutor is saying we need to do this we probably should do it these are bad guys right i mean if they weren't bad guys they wouldn't have been arrested i mean there's this mentality as well that well if the police have arrested them then they must be criminals they must be worthy of uh, being put in prison. So I found an answer to the question about whether a grand jury has to be unanimous. And this info... I'm almost certain it does not. Th- this info is from St. Louis Public Radio, so I'm guessing it only applies to Missouri. Mm-hmm. It says, no, the votes of nine members are required to find a true bill resulting in an indictment. Well, the nine is only relevant compared to how many sit on a grand jury. Twelve. You know? so, so it's 12 there? Yes. Like here it's 23 or 24 in uh, in New Hampshire. More coming up here in moments. 855-450 free. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. 
experts at web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial up toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. We're talking about the various different police killings that have gone on over just the last few months, and only a couple or a few of them. There's... More than we could possibly talk about. Uh, they're always rolling in, whether it's police killing people, abusing them, uh, molesting them, raping them. They're, there's just all kinds of horrifying stories out there. Uh, throwing grenades into babies' cribs, killing dogs left and right. Killing grandma after they go into the wrong house. Or going into the right house and killing grandma. I mean, all these things have, have happened over the last several years, and it's pretty disturbing. So that's one uh, one aspect of it. The other one was kind of talking about grand juries and what that process is like and how frequent the grand juries will return true bills. That is, they'll return uh, indictments against various different so-called criminals, many of whom have, you know, never harmed anyone. Of course, you know, there's plenty of people being charged with felonies who are not actually violent individuals or who have not committed fraud, like Ross Ulbricht, who is, of course, facing the rest of his life in prison for allegedly running the Silk Road, which is an underground uh, black marketplace. Of course, there's plenty of people who've been arrested and charged with selling, distributing, and possessing various different types of drugs who have not ever harmed anyone else. I mean, it would be interesting to, you know, to be on a grand jury and, and experience what that was like. If you've been on one, I'd love to hear, you know, what kind of pressure are you under as a grand juror to return a true bill? I would imagine you've got pressure not just from the prosecutor— 
uh, but also from the other grand jurors, many of whom are probably law and order types who feel a particular obligation to show up and do their duty and show up and do this grand jury thing, whereas many people who are let's say, on the poorer spectrum, uh, you know, maybe less inclined towards believing law enforcement would also be more likely to try to come up with an excuse uh, to get out of the grand jury service in the first place because they can panel these grand juries for long periods of time. Now, I don't know how many days a week they, you know, they bring them in or how many days in a month, but you were saying this Ferguson case took three months? Did that, did the jury I, have I don't to sit know in if that for- was, you know, Five days a week for three months. Okay, good question then. Yeah, how many hours? How many physical hours do these right, grand juries have to sit there? Right, because the shooting happened in July, and it's you know December. That, that, now, that so. was August. Or no, July? it was August. It was early August. No, no, no. He was he was shot in July. It That's was August eighth. Ferguson in Ferguson. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about New York. I apologize. Which one was the one in New York? The one that I Eric Garner, Garner was yeah. okay. in New York. That but, was either June or July. So Bitcoin, by the way, is on the rise. And to prove it to you, you can head down to the Texas Bitcoin Conference at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, March 28th and 29th. Uh, It's going to be a great event. The first one we went to last year, Free Talk Live broadcast live from the event, and it was great. They're going to be better. I think it's going to be better in 2015 because they're moving it to the heart of Austin downtown, uh, whereas last time it was out at a a racetrack out kind of in the middle of nowhere. So this year it's going to be loaded up with the best and brightest speakers, the latest exhibitions in Bitcoin, and they'll be hosting the second million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. They've even invited a bunch of legislators to the event from Texas to show them uh, that first hand that not enacting complicated regulations encourages innovation and job creation. The Texas Bitcoin Conference will prove Bitcoin is a force for good. If you're knee-deep in Bitcoin or just interested, it's the place to be March 28th and 29th. And there's also a kickoff event for those of you getting there early on the 27th. And uh, they're also doing a white papers call. So if you've got an idea that can make the community grow, you can reach out at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Get your tickets there and get $25 off with coupon code FREETALKLIVE. Uh, all together as one word at texasbitcoinconference.com, the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference coming up March 28th and 29th in 2015. We'll look forward to seeing you there. In other Ferguson-related news, uh, looks like the Oath Keepers haven't backed down as it was sounding as though they had done earlier this week. Was it this week or last week? It was late last week when they arrived, and I believe it was Saturday or Sunday when the news came out that said that police and other law enforcement told them to leave, and they did. And they packed it up and went home. They even interviewed the founder of the Oath Keepers. Now, Oath Keepers wow. is a organization that, as I understand it, you can only be a member if you are former military or police. Now they may have a supporter kind of. They, role they do where have you can, supporters you that can give them money, but right, you can't be an oath keeper, I guess, without having been having taken an oath uh, to the state, right? And whatever that entails, and so the oath keepers. I've met a number of these guys, and they seem genuine. They seem like people who care about freedom, at least in some areas. And uh, the idea behind the oath keeper is that. They're going to not do certain things when ordered to do them, I guess. Like if ordered to confiscate guns, uh, they won't violate supposedly the Constitution and confiscate guns. I imagine the Oath Keepers probably aren't as firm on uh, being ordered to confiscate drugs, um, even though obviously you should have the freedom to possess whatever sort of inanimate object that you want, whether it be a drug or a gun. Uh, So, you know, I've got my critiques of the organization, but... Good on them for coming out to the Ferguson area to actually guard people's rooftops and try to prevent more looting and things like that from happening. It was disappointing reading the news earlier this week that said that the Oath Keepers were calling it quits and bailing out because the police were threatening to charge them with uh, some sort of crime, essentially claiming that they were operating without a license, operating a security company or as as security agents operating as unlicensed security agents meaning that the police were jealous that the oath keepers were doing a better job than the police at actually keeping things safe and stopping violence from happening well is it hard to believe that there's some agency that does a better job than police of course not it's not hard to believe violence it. from happening nor is it hard to believe that the police would threaten that agency and demand they leave town right because of butthurt <laughs> the cops were butthurt. It's true. 
Right. So that's why I'm elated to see this story, which apparently, you know, I didn't see it just until yesterday, but it came out on Tuesday. Uh, according to the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, a volunteer group of security guards associated with Oath Keepers, the National Constitutional Rights Organization, says they never abandoned their posts in Ferguson after being targeted by police for operating without a license. St. Louis County Police confronted the well-armed volunteers early Wednesday as they guarded the rooftops of buildings previously vandalized during unrest in Ferguson. The reason the Oath Keepers were not allowed to remain on the rooftops is that the individuals from the group did not adhere to St. Louis County Ordinance regulating security officers, couriers, and guards. This according to the St. Louis Police Spokesman. He said Ordinance 701.115 lays out the requirements. And he added that, quote, as a matter of public safety, the St. Louis County Police Department must adhere to our policies that ensure security personnel have the required background and qualifications to perform such a role. As though, or background check. Uh, so as though, you know, you need to have some sort of clear background in order to be able to stand on someone's roof toting a rifle to prevent people from coming and breaking into a building. This is ridiculous, the, the claims that the police are making, and they're so obviously transparent uh, in their attempts to try to prevent competition from coming into the area. That's clearly what this is all about. However, Sam Andrews, the local leader of Oath Keepers, who in the original Post-Dispatch story wouldn't provide his last name, said Tuesday that the guards returned to their posts after being told of the county's regulation. He said, quote, once we read the statute, we laughed at it. Then the next night we were there, unquote. He pointed out part of the ordinance that describes a security guard as a person who is, quote, employed. Unquote. He said the Oath Keepers in Ferguson include former off-duty police as well as people with extensive military experience. He said all of them are unpaid for the work they're doing above a strip of stores and apartments two blocks from the Ferguson Police and Fire Departments. He says this is not America. We don't tax volunteers. Since they've been back on the rooftops, he says that An uh, Andrew said the police have not tried to enforce the ordinance and uh, that, quote, now that they know who some of our guys are, I suspect they're a lot less likely to challenge us, he himself being a weapons engineer and former government contractor. So great news. They're back on the rooftops in Ferguson after being threatened by the police, initially pulling themselves down from the rooftops, doing a little bit of research on the ordinance or statutes in question, and then ultimately deciding to go back up on the roof. Now, it's good that they went back up and that they bothered to put the time and effort into checking the claims of the police. But obviously here, if the statute had been written differently, would that have then kept them down from the roof? That's my question. Possibly. It does sound very obedient on their parts. Like, oh, well, we're back up because the statute, the way we read it, it makes it sound like we'd be okay. It's not really them sticking their necks out too far. Now, obviously, the police could interpret the statute differently, go ahead and make the arrest and charge one of these guys, and then we'll see how it shakes out in the courts. So, to some extent, Oath Keepers is taking that risk. We know that the police, their interpretations of law can differ from your and my ter interpretations of right. law. Right, and I, I saw a video a couple of weeks ago about some guy that was, like, playing a guitar in the subway and the police officer read the statute that said that he's allowed to be there and then arrested him anyway. Yeah, I read that story. It was in Rolling, Rolling Stone. Wow, so the officer didn't agree with your interpretation then. Right, because saying. there's the word permit, and he took it to mean you need a piece of paper. We'll come back with more here. 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, December 5th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.27 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,190 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $375. Antiwar.com reports with the elections now scheduled for March 17th, things are moving fast for Israel as various parties look to unite under joint list in an attempt to boost their number of seats. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu faces new challenges both internally and externally. With a new Jerusalem Post poll showing a 60% majority opposing Netanyahu retaining the premiership, former Likud minister Gideon Sa'ar is under growing pressure to try to take the Likud leadership spot from Netanyahu and potentially succeed him as premier. Meanwhile, the center-right seems to be in talks to form a Stop Netanyahu joint list, with Yair Lapid's party Yesh Atid confirming talks with Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman and former Likud official Moshe Kalon to bring their respective parties together for the vote. Further to the left, Labour and Marats have failed in their attempt to form a joint center-left list, though Labour may still prove to be a key part in the centrist coalition, if one is possible after the vote. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports Attorney General Eric Holder on Thursday promised a full investigation into the choking death of an unarmed man by a New York police officer as protests flared for a second day over a grand jury's decision declining to bring criminal charges in the case. Reaction to Wednesday's decision did not indict Officer Daniel Pantaleo for his role in the videotaped confrontation that left 43-year-old Eric Garner dead, echoed a wave of outrage sparked nine days earlier by a similar outcome in the fatal shooting of an unarmed armed teenager by a policeman in Missouri. Pantaleo could still face disciplinary action from an internal police investigation. A departmental investigation will likely focus on whether Pantaleo employed a chokehold banned by New York Police Department regulations in restraining Garner as he and other officers sought to arrest him for illegally selling cigarettes on a sidewalk in July. In addition to triggering protests around the country, the New York and Missouri cases have reignited debate over U.S. law enforcement system widely perceived to unfairly target minorities. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, who took office in January promising to improve relations between minorities and police, told reporters on Thursday the city's thousands of patrol officers would undergo extensive training. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports a New York appeals court denied a chimpanzee's claim to the full rights of human beings Thursday, finding the primate has no social duties. The court, in a unanimous decision, ruled against Tommy, a 26-year-old chimp, and lawyer Stephen Wise, president of the Non-Human Rights Society. Wise challenged the rights of Tommy's owners to keep him in a cage in Gloversville, New York. Chimpanzees are the closest surviving relatives of Homo sapiens, descended from a common ancestor four to six million years ago. They have been observed using tools, and members of the species have learned to communicate through sign language or by manipulating symbols. But the five justices of the appeals court in Albany found that they are not fully human. Weiss, in his complaint, charged that Patrick and Diane Lavery of Gloversville were effectively effectively keeping Tommy in solitary confinement under conditions the primate would never have consented to. He did not charge the couple violated any animal welfare laws, instead arguing chimpanzees are so close to humans they should be treated as legal persons. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It was a big night for music's hottest acts, especially for Lord Chillingsworth. In a shocking upset, the young artist took home the spookiest Halloween sound effect album Grammy for Creepy Night in Halloween Manor. Music blogger Ty Vaughn is here. Ty, what a shocker. Lord Chillingsworth's track, Man Being Boiled Alive While Chains Rattle in a Dungeon, was crazy spooky. It was everywhere this year. Haunted houses, Halloween stores, nighttime hayrides. Anywhere you look, people were getting the willies from this album. But a lot of people thought Grammy darling Dr. Dr. Spookenstein was a shoe-in to win for his album, Laboratory of Madness. And that was a great album. Critics praise Spookenstein's stripped-down approach, rattling real bones together and dripping real blood onto a screaming lady. The class act Spookenstein offered a gracious congratulations to Chillingsworth, saying, I'm a fan of every bloody who was nominated, especially Chillingsworth. I have a skeleton of respect for him as an artist. I just saw him on the dead carpet and congratulated him. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free here to bring up anything you would like, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, and you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there. You get to create the content. Whatever you see on the front page of the site has been placed there by listeners just like you. You can uh, go there and submit content through our Reddit-based system. That means it's free to use. You submit whatever you want. Maybe it's a news article or blog post, a YouTube video, something you think's funny, newsworthy, exciting, outrageous, whatever it is you want to put up there, whatever you think our other listeners will appreciate. And then other listeners uh, can vote them up what you submit, and you can vote what they submit. Uh, vote, vote it up if you like, down if you don't. And then we'll look at the page and decide well, whether or not we want to talk about that stuff on the air. Of course, the best way to get your ideas on the air is to call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE or Skype us at username lrn.fm. Tonight in studio, you've got Ian. Daryl. And Danica. Daryl is here courtesy of his website, fpp.cc and fppradio.com. We can talk more about those here in a little bit. And, of course, we'll take your calls about whatever happens to be on your mind. If you're just tuning in, we've been talking about uh, Ferguson, New York, various different places around the country where people have been murdered by police officers or allegedly murdered. In some cases, it's pretty clear murder, like the Eric Garner case in New There's video. Right, there's video of that one. In the Ferguson case, uh, it's not as clear. Maybe there was some evidence that was contradictory for instance, witness statements in the Ferguson case that really made it a big question mark as to what actually transpired. Definitely homicide. The question is whether justified or not. Yes. Um, so homicide being the killing of another human being by a human yes. being, uh, which I learned that just the other night by, I think, listening to Free Talk Live. I don't know what I was listening to. <laughs> maybe, it was, maybe it was Derek J's, Vic, or, no, Derek J's show's Peace News Now or Cop Block Radio. I could have been. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of where we've been so far. Still to come here, we've got some related stories about the Eric Garner case, specifically the guy who was indicted. The police officer was not indicted, but somebody was who was involved in that Eric Garner situation. Danica, you've got the story. Turns out the guy who was recording the video that is so infamous now. He's the one who's gotten in trouble. Yes, Ramsey Orti, Orta, sorry, um, has been uh, charged with a um, well, 
a gun charge. Mm. Um, in New York, that's pretty serious. <laughs> yes, in New York, unfortunately, there are extremely strict gun laws. Uh, there was the football regulars. player a couple of years ago that shot himself in his leg. <laughs> I remember seeing that and video. And then went to prison for two years for a gun charge. Wow. Okay. So in light of the grand jury's non-indictment of Eric Gardner, um, the grand jury did in fact did uh, indict Ramsey Orda on gun charges that he claims, so this is Orda claiming, um, were pinned on him by the NYPD in an act of retaliation against him for filming the choking death. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know all the details, but, you know, it sounds plausible to me that the police would do that. Oh, sure. Yeah. He was arrested on August 2nd after the police allegedly saw him handing a uh, 25 caliber handgun to a friend. Mm. Now, um, I don't I'm not very knowledgeable with guns, but I did look up what a ca- uh, 25 caliber looks like. It's a really tiny handgun. Yeah, I would, I would imagine so. I've never even heard of a 25. I've heard of a 22. So 25, that's new, new for me. I mean, I, mean, I imagine it exists, but. My first time. So he, um, and re- not necessarily related, he has a prior drug conviction on two felony charges. Uh, oh, man. So they're going to go after him hard, Yeah, they're right? really going to go after him hard. You, If and you're a felon, you can't have a gun. And they're, they're claiming they saw him hand someone a gun. Oh, wait. I, I apologize. I misspoke. So he has a prior drug conviction. So this is, you know, something separate. But they have um, indicted him on two felony charges. A criminal firearm possession and third degree criminal weapon possession and a misdemeanor weapon possession charge. He's pleading not guilty and is going to be fighting the charges. So you're saying that he has a, dr- a drug charge, but they may not be a felony drug charge? Right, yeah. And it's it seems like that the drug is not going to be impacting him. He's simply being targeted because he was seen supposedly handing a gun to someone. Mm-hmm. Is there more detail about the uh, the arrest in that case? Because I'm, I'm wondering if they arrested the person to whom he handed the gun as well. Uh, the patrolman uh, benevolent association issued a statement on his arrest with harsh words for, and I quote, criminals like Mr. Orta who carry illegal firearms who stand to benefit the most by demonizing the good work of police officers, end quote. Wow. So they're actually suggesting that by recording video of a cop murdering a man, that it was his <laughs> intention as a dirty criminal to demonize the police. That's what the police union that's is saying what, there? That's what they're saying. Um, both uh, wow. Orta's wife and his mother are saying that um, since this happened, they ha- before he before he was arrested, uh, the police have been following them. They've been shining lights in their houses. Like They have mm. literally been stalking them. Try, you know, trying to find something. Targeting this guy, yeah. trying to find some way to to get him in trouble. Well, you would think that if that was true, that the cops had been harassing this guy and his family— that he would have been real cautious about handing a gun to somebody, right? Like if you were in the guns and drugs business, and I'm not saying the guy is, but I'm just, if you were in the guns and drugs business or one or the other, and you know the police are sniffing around, if you're hot, as it would be called, it's a good idea to just kind of chill out for a little while, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I would agree. I would probably hold myself up for a while. And exactly. Just, you know, stay out of the spotlight for sure. Now, of course, there is also an argument that, you know, if he's a typical drug dealer or something like that, he probably doesn't have more than a hundred bucks to his name and so needs to keep dealing in order to continue whatever level of lifestyle he has. But nonetheless, uh, you should still be really cautious if you know the police are out, out to get you like that. And it sounds like he was well aware of it. So that's why he's going with not guilty. He, he's saying he was set up. You saying uh, these charges are false? Uh, well, he is going to be pleading not guilty. Uh, both his wife and his mother um, have said that they do believe that he was, in fact, set up. That hmm. the, you know, like I said, the police have been stalking them, shining lights in their houses, following them, driving by their house a lot. Uh, there has That's been scary, man. It's very scary. I I'd be freaking out too. A DNA test has been conducted on the handgun to determine whether or not the samples are a match. Um, you know, a well, DNA test I don't know on how much DNA there's going to be on a handgun. I guess some skin cells or something. There, there's going to be fingerprints, definitely. Yeah. Well, they're, well I mean, they're obviously going to match the fingerprints, but DNA, yeah, that's going to be a little strange. It sounds like a pretty uh, pretty big setup to me. So this was the guy who was recording the video of yes. Eric Garner being choked to death. And just a matter of, what, two weeks, you said, after the incident? Probably about two weeks because Gardner uh, died on the 17th of July and then he was arrested on the 2nd of August. Right. 
So they got their man. Finally, somebody they can distract uh, the public with. Uh, well, look, these guys are all criminals. This Garner and this guy, what was his name? Raphael or something like that? Uh, Ramsey Orta. Ramsey. This uh, Ramsey and Garner obviously hanging out together. These guys are all criminals plying the streets of New York with their guns and drugs. This cop was just doing us all a favor. And the drug that Garner was selling was tobacco. That's correct. He, he but allegedly, illegal. it was illegal, illegal tobacco. Right. Allegedly, he was selling cigarettes that had been purchased in North Carolina. Oh, even more illegal. He, he was selling like single cigarettes. Are they Lucy's. untaxed in North Carolina? Is that why they're lower tax? Yeah, uh, differently uh, taxed. Lower. Oh, I see. Okay. Lower, though. Lots lower. Right. <laughs> Everywhere is lower than New York City. Oh, of course. Right. Even if he were to have gone to the Seneca Indian Reservation in the state of New York mm-hmm. and bought cigarettes. To resell, that'd be to illegal, To resell. Too. That, well, that would still be illegal, but then there's no tax on those because they're purchased on an Indian reservation. Uh-huh. That's very true. Well, then why would he go all the way to North Carolina? Is it possible oh, that because sh- sent him. You, you can't get the really good cigarettes on the Indian reservations? You can't get the Philip Morris brand, that right. stuff. Okay. Well, I'm sure the uh, the Seneca Indians are not happy with you indicting their cigarettes, uh, Daryl. I'm not they're, a tobacco smoker. I imagine they're proud of the quality of the manufacturing and the tobacco that goes into those I, cigarettes. I've heard that those are actually better cigarettes. That's what I've heard. But they're not the name brand. They're not the ones that people are asking for. Right. Well, if you're selling Lucy's on the streets, then you're probably not really too concerned about brands either, right? Or if you're buying Lucy's. If, if you're on the streets and some guy's like, eh, Lucy's, one buck. Because that's what you're going to have to pay for Lucy in New York is at least a dollar. The uh, packs of cigarettes are insanely priced there. Hey, Lucy's for a dollar. You're not going to be like, well, uh, do you have any Newports? (laughs) (laughs) You don't get to choose. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We'll continue here in moments. Your calls and thoughts welcome. Police abuse. It's Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, December 1st, 2014, gold opened at 1195.40. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1239.50, 619.75 for a half ounce, or 309.88 for a quarter ounce. That's 1239.50, 619.75, and 309.88. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase and there's no end to this madness that old 401k and ira can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences i explain this in my book 10 reasons to buy gold don't let time slip away call for your free copy today 800-686-2237 get away from that washington spin and get honest answers about gold 800-686-2237 the book is free 800-686-2237 On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because 
I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about the man who was attacked by police and murdered for the horrible criminal act of selling Lucy's on the streets in New York. But more specifically, the other guy who was there, not the cop, but the man behind the camera who was ultimately, subsequently, two weeks later, arrested with some BS gun charge. Uh, We'll continue the story here. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Do you have Bitcoin and are in need of a car? New Age Auto Sales has late model used cars that they have cared for in their rental fleet. Since New Age Auto Sales is selling their own well-maintained cars, their auction fees and transport costs don't get passed to you because they didn't have them. Their cars are in great condition and they're priced to move. They can ship anywhere in the world. Go to NewAgeAutoSales.com and check out their inventory. They're looking to become the Bitcoin auto dealer. But obviously, if there's something that they have you want and you don't have enough Bitcoin, they can help you there. So go to NewAgeAutoSales.com for late model, well-maintained cars shipped anywhere in the world for Bitcoin. NewAgeAutoSales.com. As we go to your phone calls and thoughts, we've got Liberty Phoenix on the line in Illinois via Skype. Hello, Phoenix. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Um, I just wanted to call and say that I kind of disagree with what you were saying, Ian, as far as selling Lucy's. Um, I was selling Lucy's at Porkfest, much to the ATF's chagrin, and I found that I had more sales if I had both menthol and non-menthol. And I'm sure it would have been even more if I had actual varying brands of menthol and uh, and varying brands of non-menthol. Well, I am glad to hear that the black market is stepping up to provide consumers with choice. But you are pointing out that you had a, a difference in type, like golds versus menthol, not necessarily in brands. You were not speci- were you not specifying for people which brand they were purchasing? Um, yeah, absolutely. If uh, if indiv- I only had either marbles or Newports, but mm-hmm. um, you know, if you know, if someone I had it posted on my on, on a little advertisement on the back of my backpack, you know, Newports and, and Marlboros. Wow, but, you you were actually openly advertising that you were selling uh, tobacco. That's pretty well, ballsy. It was it's it's my property. I can do whatever I want with it. It's just because you people can, are going to they put you in handcuffs. No, I mean, just I mean just kudos to you. With, just because people are going to threaten me with violence doesn't mean I'm not going to do something. Well, I love that. I think that's a great attitude. And thanks for uh, calling to share your story tonight. So, um, anything else you want to share out of your experience of selling Lucy's? Um, it was kind of ironic. A friend of mine, um, was rather nervous about it. It was like, you know, I, I think there's a couple of, of FDA, or, uh, not FDA, um, uh, ATF agents here. Mm-hmm. Cause one guy had given him that one of those weird vibes. So he gave me his whole pack was like, you know, here, you take, take care of this stuff. And I'm like, well, okay, sure. So you didn't even come there with the intention of selling these things or you both did. No, um, it wasn't like, you know, I stopped and picked up like five cartons before I went there. It was just, you know, it's, it's an extremely expensive environment. 
And I started running low on money. So I was like, well, what can I do to make some money? Well, let me, let me sell a product that everybody likes or that, that everybody wants. And I, I hmm. doubt very many people like the product. Well, and there's some great success stories out of Porkfest by doing that. I, I know of a couple of people that saw just how bad the mosquitoes were uh, one year. Not, I think it was the previous year they were particularly bad. Um, a bunch of them went to Walmart uh, and purchased, it was either 5 or $10 uh, electric fly swatters, sold them for twice the price. Yeah, they're $5. And, yeah, and they just kept selling out, and they made so much money out of it because they saw that there was a, uh, a market demand for these kinds of things, and they took advantage of it, and I think that's great. Well, Phoenix, uh, thanks for sharing your story tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's the kind of courage that I wish more business owners uh, would would take on, uh, would be that they would be willing to flaunt the law, or to flout, rather, uh, the law, and, uh, and just go about doing their business anyway, regardless of what the ordinances and the statutes say, because it's the right thing to do. It shouldn't be a crime to sell somebody a rolled-up cylinder of tobacco, uh, but it is unless you have the government permission slip. It would, it's my understanding it's illegal to buy a pack of cigarettes and resell it as Lucy's. It's illegal to take cigarettes from another state and sell them in a different state without the you know, appropriate tax stamp uh, being placed upon them. And so even though the state would have collected, if you bought a pack of cigarettes in New Hampshire, it's where we are. If you buy a pack of cigarettes in New Hampshire and then you go and sell Lucy's on the streets, even though the tax has already been paid, I have a feeling that that would be uh, illegal as well. Of course. And in a lot of states, they have something called a use tax, meaning that if you purchase something in one state and then you use it in another state, you're supposed to know that you need to pay this tax. To the state in which you're using the thing? Right. So, for instance, uh, let's just say that we go over to Vermont for some reason, Mm -hmm. which is only about 20 miles away, and we buy something, and then we bring it here. Obviously, New Hampshire has no sales tax. I don't think they have a use tax either. So, that's actually not a good uh, analogy. But let's pretend— You're going from Vermont to New York. Let's pretend that we live in Vermont, come over to New Hampshire, buy things— Take it back into Vermont to use the products. Which people do all the time. People do all the time. Sure, yeah. They are supposed to then pay the use tax to the state of Vermont. I know for a fact that Alabama and Pennsylvania both have a use tax. And Is I it think the same state, as the sales tax? In as far as I know, every state that has a use tax, it is the same exact rate as the sales tax. Wow. So that's one of the things. So in theory. Where, in theory, if if someone went from New York State or went from Vermont to Massachusetts and bought something and then went took it back to Vermont, they'd have to pay the Massachusetts sales tax and then the Vermont sales tax. Yes, if well, they the wanted Vermont to be legal. Use tax, right? The use tax. If they right. wanted to be legal, and that that's one of the things that Amazon is really advocating for is that people pay the use tax. And then the uh, small what, what's it called? The American Booksellers Association. Uh, an organization I'm not a member of, and I'm very upset at because they're advocating for what they call the Marketplace Fairness Act that would specify that if you sell something online, you as the seller would be responsible for collecting the use tax or the sales tax of the 9,600 jurisdictions what? in the U.S. and then pay that That's insane. for the seller. Right. Now, wait a minute. You said Amazon supporting that too? Yes. What? You know, there there was, um, this had to be have been sometime last year. I did purchase on Amazon. I buy most of my things from Amazon. And I noticed that there was a tax on it. And I never had paid taxes before. And wait, this was when you were in New Hampshire? And no, this is what, um, back when I lived in Idaho. In Idaho, okay. Yeah. Uh, I had never gotten any sort of tax whatsoever. And I tried to look into it, and I couldn't really find anything about it. But I had been charged. Does Amazon tax. have a shipping facility in Idaho? No, not that I'm aware of. Then that is very interesting because I know that's one of the reasons they're setting up so many facilities is so then they can ship the product from as close to you as possible. Sure, yeah, and then possibly charge you sales tax. Well, the closest one I know is probably somewhere in 
probably either in Oregon or Washington. Um, I've not gotten, you know, that was the only time. So, and I don't, I don't think it was an independent vendor. Like I didn't purchase it, like say from eBay or anything. Right. Um, so it, it's kind of, it's kind of sneaky that way. Right. Well, I know that Amazon does have a lot of their stuff is handled by third parties. And sure. if it ships within the state, then there is tax. And that probably was that. it, yeah. Toll free number tonight, 855 450 free. That's, well, one good reason to live in New Hampshire. No state sales tax. Uh, of course, there's 101 of those reasons. You can go to 101 reasonsfilm.com to check some of them out. It's Free Talk Live. This holiday season, give the gift that keeps on giving, an in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. With your very own freeze dryer, you'll be able to freeze dry the food your family loves. Because we live in uncertain, difficult times, what better way to show your love for your family than to buy them a gift that helps them preserve food they can use now or in 25 years. Go to HarvestRight.com and find out how you can get your in-home freeze dryer. Layaway is available. That's HarvestRight.com. Hi, I'm Sam Nussbaum, WellPoint's Chief Medical Officer. We proudly support the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Join us in working together to provide children with a healthier start in life. Visit marchofdimes.org. It's being called the must-have tech gadget of the year. The Samsung Apex, which hits shelves today, streams video into your left eye, internet into your right eye, and sucks your dick all at the same time. Samsung spokesman Neil Werner is projecting the biggest sales in his company's history. Are you kidding me? This thing does everything, plus it sucks your dick, all right? And I know what you're thinking, and yes, ladies, there is a version for you that eats you out. Hanging up Apple, we beat you the punch on this one. Samsung's got you by the balls. In spite of the almost $1,000 price tag, customers are raving about the device. For my career, I do need uh, the internet and TV and my dick sucked all the time. I already have a TV and a girlfriend and a laptop, but to have all those in one device would be really nice. Even a run of bad press about unsafe working conditions in the Apex factory in India have not dampened sales projections. Yeah, 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 factory, factory, switch up, switch up, blah, blah. How about you just plug your eyeball straight into the internet and get your dick sucked? This is the Onion News Network. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. (laughs) 
This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online by dropping by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that you'll find there completely free. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. Also at freetalklive.com, you get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. You just go to coffee.freetalklive.com. And get hooked up. You just pay the shipping cost. You can cancel your subscription at any time. But if you don't cancel, and we're expecting that you won't because it's great coffee, then they'll send more coffee to you. And you can decide which kind of coffee you want to get, how often you receive it, and in what quantity. So you get to customize all of that at coffee.freetalklive.com. But why would you be interested besides the fact that it's free? Well, it's also shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. It's great product, and there's a good purpose here, too, because BuzzBox is teaming up with Free Talk Live and Kiva.org to help change people's lives who are in poverty by giving them an opportunity to make their lives better through microloans from Kiva. So the way it works is every 10 listeners who signs up actually funds one microloan. And I didn't know this was true, but apparently it's one every month, uh, not one period. So there's continual microloans being funded here. So it's even better than I originally had thought that That's it was. Great. And it was I thought it was great originally. Um, so you can help fund these microloans just by drinking great coffee and you get your first pound free. Just pay that shipping cost and you're all set over at coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, that's coffee.freetalklive.com. Well, we're sort of all things tonight on bad cops, killer cops who are completely exonerated from, you know, any level of responsibility for what it is that they've done. And if you're the one who shows the world their aggressiveness, if you're the person behind the video camera, look out because as Danica has told us, the gentleman who was holding the video camera while the police uh, the police officer murdered Eric Garner in New York City, um, he is now facing felony charges for ostensibly handing someone a gun. And he did this while the police were on his tail. You know, they're they're watching him. They were harassing his family. Danica, you said they were coming by their house, rolling by real slow, you know, doing shining really lights in their houses, creepy, unusual stuff that mm -hmm. really made it obvious that there was an extra level of attention being placed on him and his family. Oh, yeah. So I, I know you said we're pretty much done with the story. There, um, there was a was there a quote that you wanted to share, or was was that yeah? There, uh, there was something else that was just at the bottom of this article, which I thought was interesting, and I wanted to kind of propose it to you too and see what you think. So Erica Garner, uh, the daughter of Eric Garner, uh, he had a few kids, right? Like four or six kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he has a few children. Uh, she was interviewed, and she said that she doesn't believe it's so much. This issue is not so much about racism. Uh, but she believes that it is a power issue and that the officer, Daniel Pentelis, pride that escalated the altercation and which led to a fatal conclusion. So she's quite as saying this is not a black and white issue. Uh, she said it is about the officer's pride. It was about my father being six foot four and 350 pounds, and he wanted to be the top cop that brings mm. a man down. Um, she has also said that she will not be able to forgive Mr. Pantaleo, and she called for him to admit his fault. Uh, what do you? I mean, what do you two think? Do you think it is both issues? Do you think it's one or the other? I, I think it's definitely a power thing. And I watched the video again this afternoon because I saw an article where they actually had the final words of Eric Garner, and you know he said, "You guys are always harassing me," and then they're, like, "Come on, you're going with us," and he's like, "Don't touch me. Leave me alone." And then that's when he wound up getting in, put into a chokehold that the cops are saying isn't a chokehold. They're coming up with some other name for it because you can't use a chokehold. And the the way he's laying, one of his arms, he's on one of his arms and it's in front of him and they're pulling the other arm behind him. They're like, put your hand behind your back. And he's got two people on top of him. It is physically impossible to do for anything. him to do anything. And they're yell yelling at him, stop, stop resisting. resisting. Stop resisting. Put your hand behind your back. I didn't, I haven't even, honestly, I haven't even seen the video just because I'm so sick of all of the violent oh, police horrible. videos. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, it's an awful video. Um, but, you know, I could have, like I said, I guessed he said stop resisting without even having seen the video. 
Because yeah. that's just a standard cop line of, well, if I yell stop resisting, then that gives me justification to be even more violent. Right. Because there's no way to really prove by video camera that someone is resisting. I mean, you could maybe if the camera was really close up and focused on the muscles on the person's arm, you could maybe see that they were tense or something like that. But, right. you know, but for the most part, case, you can't tell. The, the way he's laying, he's laying on his arm. Yeah. It is physically impossible for him to move his arm. And they're yelling, stop resisting. And he's saying, get off of me. I can't breathe. It's funny. when I, I remember reading this article when it first came out uh, on another friend's show. And the excuses for the police at that time were, well, if he didn't have health problems, you know, he would have been fine. And then the the, the autopsy uh, revealed that his um you know his breathing was certainly restrained and that's what caused him to die. It was not necessarily his asthma problems. So yeah. let's you go know. let's go to Mark. He's on the line in New York. Mark, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Daryl, and Danica. Yeah, guys, I, I just want to make a point. I'm su- surprised you got to me this fast. Oh, man, it's that easy I- to call Free Talk Live. <laughs> I had an article here, and it was a new issue of Reason magazine, and it was about the uh, basically how the uh, I have to paraphrase now. I wanted to. I know reading is the bane of talk radio, but it, it basically talks about how during the Lyndon and Johnson administration started the um, with the assistance of this Law Enforcement Act. I don't have the exact act name, but they started it back in the '60s, and it was primarily it was you know it it, it, it involved. The Democrats being behind this, basically the incarceration of black folks and the militarization of the police, and it did talk about how the Republicans under Reagan, with the crime, the omnibus bill in '86, and also the you know the one that passed during uh, uh, Johnson administration. The, the point I would like to make is, you know, this black and white issue. This is all crap. If I could just, if I could listen, if I could, if one person or two or maybe a hundred black folks that are listening to this show could just listen. I'm on your side, okay? It's the tax man, it's the Democrats, it's the politicians that killed this guy. If you want to, if you want to march with me, with all my guns and my ammo, because I got more guns and ammo than you guys do, to the tax man's office, to the Federal Reserve, I'm with you. The politicians, like Cuomo was on a, on, on television today, he's all going on and on pontificating. This s bag is the one that caused this problem because they're taxing the living hell out of us. This guy was trying to make a, a living. He may have been irritating the shopkeeper who were black. You had the police, the, the sergeant who was black. I mean, this is a joke. The blue line is to protect the politicians. The police forces sure. are only in effect to protect us. I mean, to protect, to protect the politicians, the people in office. So during the French revolutions, we don't get out the guillotine and chop their heads off like that happened in the French revolution. Before it even gets there, every single little town has a police force. And unfortunately, uh, they are just turning into the Gestapo, and I'm more sick and tired than anybody else. Every time, let me tell you something. I had two run-ins with the police recently. Just minor stuff. And where are you in New York? Are you in the city or upstate? Right, or? Right, just 26 miles north of the city, right on the Connecticut okay. border. Got it. But I go into the city every day. Whenever someone, when, I'm going to tell you folks, and if you haven't run into someone, whenever you run into a cop, first thing they say to you, the training is, what's your name? Hey, what's your name? What's your name? They want to know your name. Mm-hmm. And you immediately blurt out your name. You know what? I'm getting so sick and tired. I, don't, I tell them, you know what? What's your name? Oh, let me get my, let me write out. And who's your commanding officer? And how long have you been in, uh, how long have you been out of training? Because we have to stand up to these, these people. No, I, I agree with that. I, I think that, uh, I mean, but the, the, I don't want to cut you off. The, the, the tax man, the politicians killed this guy. They, the police are only there to protect them. And when this crap really hits the fan, I'm ready to go. Thanks, guys. Well, thanks for the call, uh, the call there, Mark. I think it's I think it's a good good approach to ask the police questions. Although to be clear, there are some jurisdictions in which if you do not identify yourself to the police, that you can be arrested for that. Right, uh, so. and identify does not necessarily mean show them a piece of plastic. Correct. It can just simply mean giving them your name, state and your name, mm-hmm. serial usually number, your birth, et usually it's name and birthday. That way they can try to find you in some kind of database. Uh, There's more coming up here in moments. 855 450 free. You can take control of the airwaves. Mom gives us our own special Christmas ornament every year. This year she gave me one with a picture of me playing soccer. It's my most favorite ornament ever. Each Christmas, moms everywhere create the wonderful tradition of placing special ornaments on the Christmas tree. 
This year, you can make your tradition even more special with unique, customizable ornaments from personalcreations.com. They have an amazing selection of adorable ornaments to choose from. You can even design the characters to look just like members of your family, including your pets. And you can customize each ornament with any name you'd like to make them truly one of a kind. Radio listeners, you can get a special deal. For a limited time when you order select ornaments on the site, you'll get a second one absolutely free. That's two amazing ornaments for the price of one. And personalization is included. But hurry because this exclusive offer ends this Friday at midnight. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to personalcreations.com. Click on the orange star in the top right corner and enter the secret code 6767. That's personalcreations.com, secret code 6767. Do you have relatives and friends that are convinced there is no need ever to prepare for any kind of emergency? Are these also folks you buy Christmas presents for? At 30dayfoodsupply.com, we can solve both of these problems at the same time. Go to 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 5 5- 41229 We can ship your Christmas presents directly to them. Choose from our original $99 30-day food supply, our long-term storage vegan burger mixes, and other oatmeal, soups, porridges, beans, and granolas for everyday use. All products are non-GMO, MSG-free, and vegetarian. Most are gluten, soy, and nut-free. Call 541-229-0010 today. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com keep prices low, cutting out the middleman by buying directly from their producers in Oregon. Remember, Remember, only $10 ships your entire order to the lower 48. Visit the website 30dayfoodsupply.com. Call 541-229-0010. 30dayfoodsupply.com. 541-229-0010. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free. Take control of the airwaves. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The daughter, one of the daughters of uh, Eric Garner has said this is not a black and white issue. This is a power issue. This is a police officer trying to prove he was a big man to take down a big man because Eric Garner is not a small guy. Uh, Eric Garner, of course, the person who was choked, I believe choked to death uh, by the police in New York City for the dastardly crime of selling Lucy's. Which, by the way, you're going to hear more about these kind of arrests, If especially if you're in New York City. You're probably already hearing about them because... In New York, it's incredibly expensive to buy a pack of cigarettes. And so 
there's a real black market incentive to get out there and sell not just Lucy's but also packs of cigarettes and you know sell things to people outside of the official distribution system, the licensed distribution system, and of course that can get you in some hot water. I mean, I remember reading about when they put these taxes on the cigarettes there in New York. I remember reading about they have like a undercover team. The New York Police Department has a cigarette interdiction squad, if I'm recalling the term correctly. The CIS, Cigarette Interdiction Ooh, Squad. Scary. And that's their job, is to go out and bust people like Eric Garner or set people up on Craigslist. Hey, you want to buy some cigarettes? Meet me here. And then it's a, it's a cop. So it seems like crazy stuff, but that's actually what's happening. And that's what happens with prohibition. People die unnecessarily. And, uh, and ultimately, there's no point to it because it never stops it never stops the drugs or the alcohol or, in this case, the cigarettes. The cigarettes aren't prohibited in New York, but the unlicensed sale of cigarettes is definitely prohibited. And if there's money to be made, and there is, you better believe that people are going to take whatever risk it is to make that cash. And in this case, he was selling cigarettes allegedly out of North Carolina. So, you know, you go to some other location, you buy cigarettes cheap, cheaper than, you know, you would pay in New York, buy them by the carton, you and can then you buy, bring them in and sell them. You can buy a pack of cigarettes cheaper in New Hampshire than what the tax on cigarettes is in, in New, New York. York City. Wow. The city tax is a dollar fifty. Then there's state and county tax, making the total combined tax on a pack of cigarettes in New York City five dollars and eighty five cents. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. In fact, that sounds lower than what I thought that it was. That's just the tax. Okay, that's not what the actual pack of cigarettes right. cost. Because I've heard packs costing as as much as fifteen dollars. Yeah, depending on what kind. Probably. Of so, uh, but there's a little bit of good news, and that is that according to Time Magazine, it's an anniversary worth remembering tonight. December 5th, 1933, prohibition comes to an end in the United States. At least alcohol one, yeah, prohibition. One alcohol kind of prohibition. Uh, the 18th Amendment, which prohibited the production, distribution, and sale of alcohol, easily ranks as the least popular amendment in U.S. history and the only constitutional amendment ever to be repealed. When the 21st Amendment was ratified on this day, December 5th in 1933, it ended alcohol prohibition 13 years, 10 months, and 19 days after it began. Wow, that's an amazing amount of time. 13 yeah. years. Of course, uh, drug prohibition has been going on for much longer than that, and they didn't bother to pass any kind of constitutional amendment to create drug prohibition. So, you know, again, they just do whatever it is they want to do. Obviously, they didn't need to pass an amendment to do the alcohol one, but they did, and then they undid it. The time had not passed quickly, according to journalist H.L. Mencken, who noted, quote, It almost seems a geologic, uh, geologic epoch while it was going on, and the human suffering that it entailed must have been a fair match for that of the Black Death or the Thirty Years' War, unquote. The national experiment was a resounding failure, even according to some of its earliest supporters. Lifelong teetotaler John D. Rockefeller Jr. had recanted his support the year before Prohibition's repeal in a letter published in the New York Times. He wrote, quote, When the 18th Amendment was passed, I earnestly hoped that it would be generally supported by public opinion, and thus the day be hastened when the value to society of men with minds and bodies free from the undermining effects of alcohol would be generally realized. That this has not been the result, but rather that drinking generally has increased. That the speakeasy has replaced the saloon, not only unit for unit, but probably twofold, if not threefold. Meaning that there were saloons, <laughs> or there were X number of saloons when it was legal, and now there are X times two or three times X worth of underground locations to buy I, I'm alcohol. surprised the number wasn't closer to five or ten. Well, how, how do you get a real feel for how many speakeasies there are? Right. I mean, and you don't that, that's, know. The reason, that's the reason that I think that there were even more, even more. Yeah. is because you don't want too many people knowing that your speakeasy exists. Yeah, for instance, I know of, uh, even in this lifetime, uh, this is a story from you know just a few years ago, I had a uh, friend who worked at a restaurant, and she told me that the bosses at the restaurant would keep a bottle of some sort of fancy liquor 
under the table, sort of you know, back behind the counter. They didn't have a liquor license. They could sell wine or, or beer, but they didn't have a liquor license. But for the right customers who they knew were safe, they would sell them uh, this particular alcohol. And so, you know, that stuff even goes on today, and you never really know how widespread it is because right. it's all hush-hush. Anyway, going on here with the story. While a Dallas newspaper editorial warned that Rockefeller's change of heart may in later years cause him deep regret, William Randolph Hearst countered that Rockefeller's opinion would, quote, help bring the nation to calm conviction on the ineffectiveness of prohibition as a temperance measure, unquote. Early temperance advocates had warned that drunks were in danger because of their high blood alcohol levels of spontaneous combustion, a claim that has since been proven impossible. But instead, prohibition sparked its own public health crisis. Drinking tainted bootleg liquor caused blindness, paralysis, and an estimated national average of 1,000 deaths per year. And that, of course, mirrors, as many things of alcohol prohibition, uh, this mirrors the deaths by bad heroin or overdoses of drugs like heroin where you you know buy a batch of product from a dealer and then he sells another batch not knowing that that batch that he's selling the second time is 10 times as strong or whatever you know whatever the difference in potency is and then the user presumes the same level of potency and then overdoses so there's there's all kinds of you know negative deleterious effects that happen from prohibition to the to the user Right, and let then, alone you and I, who may not be the users. And then you also have the problem of someone buying a product and then wanting to maximize their profit, so they cut the product with something else. That's correct. And then the person that they sell it to, they want to sell a little bit of the stuff, so they'll cut they it. Cut it. And so somebody will wind up getting something much weaker, and then the next time they get something that's stronger that has not been cut two or three times. And, and then the cutting thinking, agents. What about them? You know, what about the stuff that right. they're cutting it with? I forget the I forget which drug it was, but there was I think it was cocaine, where they were cutting it with some sort of product that was causing people to have serious health problems. Like I will have to go and dig up what that was. I don't I, I don't want to like go out on a limb and say what I thought it was, but it was pretty scary stuff. So you never know. Economically, the measure also failed to generate increased sales of clothing and household goods, which supporters claimed would skyrocket once breadwinners stopped throwing away their income in saloons. Sales of soda and juice were similarly expected to rise, along with entertainment industry revenue, as people sought ways to amuse themselves while sober. But those hopes were never realized. Instead, the ban on alcohol cost the federal government $11 billion in lost tax revenue, according to Ken Burns' documentary Prohibition. President Franklin D. Roosevelt was among those relieved to witness an end to the era, saying, quote, what America needs now is a drink, unquote. <laughs> and yeah, uh, so there you go. Celebrate tonight. It is uh, Friday, the 5th of December. That is the 81st anniversary, from what I understand, uh, 81 years since the end of alcohol prohibition. Wow. I'll drink to that. I will be celebrating uh, in my own way later You're on here. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and spe speaking of alcohol prohibition, there's a, an ebook that I read a couple of years ago called "A Toast to Glory," hmm. and it's about the history of the Prohibition Party. Oh, okay. These so, must be an exciting bunch. It's actually, if you're into like politics sort of stuff, hmm. it's very interesting. Whatever happened to the Prohibition Party? They still technically exist. Uh, I don't did. recall if their presidential candidate in 2012 got on more than like one or two ballots. We did interview a guy who was a Prohibition Party member, I think, or an advocate of re-prohibiting alcohol. I don't know if he's the head of the party. It wouldn't surprise me if he is. I think his name was Gene Admin Admonson. Uh, Gene, I believe, passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he was, was the 2008 presidential candidate. I spoke with him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very interesting guy. Not exactly a fan of libertarians. Of course not. Uh, this guy's a prohibitionist. He, he calls us losertarians. Of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, you don't have anything in intelligent to say. Just call somebody a name. Uh, but you can hear that interview. It's from years ago on Free Talk Live. Just go to our guest page at guests.freetalklive.com. His name was Gene Adminson or Anmanson. You can find it there. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here tonight. We're coming up here on Free Talk Live. Police cameras, the ones the cops wear, are they a bad idea? Daryl Perry will investigate. Coming up. Okay. 
If something in this facility breaks, bends, or bursts, Granger's got our back. 20 cases of disc springs from Granger.com, new rotary encoder ordered on Granger's mobile app, a dozen splash goggles from the local Granger branch. What more could you want in life? Granger has over 1 million products for all our facility's needs. 1 million. That's a one followed by six zeros, kid. Everything we need whenever we need it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, December 5th, 2014. Gold closed Thursday at $1,204, down $5. Silver closed at $16.46, up $0.05. And Bitcoin is trading around $368. Today's precious metal prices brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. Learn more at eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat. In the news, Los Angeles Police Chief Charlie Beck says three officers violated deadly force rules when they shot an unarmed man on live television last year. The Los Angeles Times reports that Beck rejected the officers' claims that they feared for their lives after a high-speed chase. Beck says the evidence did not show a deadly threat. The chief will now have to decide what punishment, if any, to give the officers who have been relieved of duty since the December 2013 shooting. The city council in August voted to pay $5 million to the family of victim Brian Beard to settle a federal civil rights lawsuit. A long-delayed Senate report on the Central Intelligence Agency's use of enhanced interrogation techniques or torture will reportedly be released on Monday. Journalist Jason Leopold tweeted that his lawyers were told that the report would be released as early as Monday. The report has been the focus of much backlash as the CIA and the Obama administration have fought to redact much of the 600-page summary. Other sources say the final version of the report will refrain from using the word torture despite referring to practices that are commonly known as torture. The NSA has spied on hundreds of international companies and organizations searching for security weaknesses in cell phone technology. That's according to documents provided by whistleblower Edward Snowden. The Intercept reports on the operation, codenamed Aurora Gold, that monitored the content of messages sent and received by more than 1,200 email accounts connected to major cell phone network operators. The agency was looking for security weaknesses that could be exploited for surveillance. The Liberty Beat, brought to you by My Magic Mud. Detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. 
videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is The Liberty Beat for Friday, December 5th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Over 700 chefs have signed and delivered a petition to lawmakers on Capitol Hill, asking them to support legislation for mandatory labeling of products made with genetically modified organisms or GMOs. The petition was delivered to lawmakers on Tuesday. A national battle has been waged over the labeling and banning of GMO products. The leader of Canada's Green Party shared a petition with the House of Commons asking the federal government to investigate the attacks of September 11th, 2001. Elizabeth May released a statement saying she was presenting the petition for petitioners in Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, and Ottawa, who want a parliamentary review into the events that occurred in the United States on September 11th. The MP later tweeted out that she was just doing her job and did not support the petition. The chief of the Houston Police Department has stated that the police cannot continue to criminalize parts of the population for casual marijuana use. In an interview airing Friday on Houston's KPFT 90.1 FM, Chief Charles McClellan says law enforcement needs to pursue solutions instead of locking people up. This edition of the Liberty Beat made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to read Alberta, Alberta, British Columbia, and Ottawa, who want a parliamentary review into the events that occurred and that occurred in the United States on September 11th. The MP later tweeted out that she was just she was just doing her job for the petition. The chief of the Houston Police Department stated that the police cannot continue to criminalize parts of the population, population for casual marijuana. In an interview airing Friday on Houston's KPFT 90.1, Chief Charles FM, Chief Charles. Saying that he has no idea what to make of the mixed signals, area man Pete Summers told reporters today he keeps getting ambiguous text messages from local woman Haley Mueller, claiming that she's not at all interested in him. One man, she's like, um, I don't want to go out with you. And then she'll mention how she has to go hang out with her boyfriend. I mean, what am I supposed to do with that? Summers, who first met Mueller at a friend's party last month, informed reporters that the 27-year-old's increasingly perplexing text messages have left him unable to ascertain whether or not she would want to date him. He also noted that Mueller's behavior at social gatherings was equally vague. Last weekend, we were at a party, and every time I would go up to her, she just said, leave me alone. Then I text her the next day, and... <laughs> She totally doesn't even respond. I mean, she just needs to make up her mind and tell me what she wants. She hasn't answered my last three phone calls, so maybe I should go over there and make sure everything's okay. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've had a lot of discussion tonight in regards to police brutality, violence, cops murdering people and getting away with it, uh, all the way down to prohibition because it was the ridiculous prohibitive tax. It's not outright prohibited, but is a prohibitive level of taxation being imposed upon cigarettes in New York City that, of course, led to Eric Garner being there selling them in the first place. Because if cigarettes were six, five bucks a pack in New York City, it really probably wouldn't be worth most people's while to go and sell them on the streets because, you know, that's not an outrageous price for a pack of cigarettes. But $15 a pack is going to see that's going to send buyers looking for other options. Right. And so, anyway, this guy ended up getting murdered by a cop. Now the cop hasn't been indicted. That led to a conversation about prohibition in general, specifically alcohol prohibition. Today, the 5th of December, uh, when we're doing this program, is the 81st the eighty first anniversary of the end of alcohol prohibition. So, yay, that's a little bit of, uh, little bit of good news. Unfortunately, prohibition continues on unabated in other categories. There are a number of things that are prohibited in our lives, and it's not just drugs. You know, that's the obvious one. 
Yeah, that's a huge there, prohibition. There's those little magnetic balls that are fun to play with. Those that are now you illegal. Can't buy anymore in the U.S. You can lawn possess darts. Them. You can lawn darts. Are those illegal to possess or just sell? Uh, I don't know if it's illegal to possess, but you can't buy them anymore legally. Right. I wonder if you can legally sell them in a garage sale. Hmm. Fireworks are illegal in, in, a, lot uh, in a lot of states. I think yeah. there's maybe four or five that still allow them. New Hampshire is one of those, but there is. are even some restrictions on fireworks in New Hampshire, from what I understand. Certain kinds, yeah. Uh, so, you know, fireworks. Also, of course, pr- um, there's obviously drugs, but also prostitution. That's another uh, service yeah. that is illegal in almost all of the states, and even in some parts of Nevada where it is legal, uh, it's still, you know, illegal in it's other It's illegal portions. in the city of Las Vegas. That's correct. Isn't it the, the county that uh, Vegas is in, or is it just the city? I don't recall. I believe it's the county. I think you have to go outside of that county in order to access the Bunny Ranch and things like that. But again, I could be wrong. If you're in Nevada and you want to correct us, feel free. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. But there are all kinds of things that are prohibited. It's prohibited to do business without a license in most places. And that is that's, that includes all kinds of different businesses. Now, from what I understand, in New Hampshire, there aren't as many licenses in order to do business. So New Hampshire is one of the lesser regulated states as far as licensure is concerned. Right. You can have a farm stand and make a certain amount of money without a license. In New Hampshire? In New Hampshire. But you know the way they define farm stand is kind of ambiguous. And now there's a bill to further define farm stand. Oh, boy. I don't know if they're going to expand the definition or you know broaden it or you know narrow it. You never know until it gets out of committee, right? That's Well, you, know. you don't know until they actually sign off on the legislative service request and it gets a bill number and then they release the text of the proposal. Sure, but it could even be changed once it gets up for a discussion, you know. Right, it that. could be changed on the house floor when it's going up for a vote. I tend to, you know, I tend to shy away from reporting on what could be as far as legislation is concerned because there's all kinds of crazy nonsense proposed in every state of right. uh, in the United States. Uh, and, you know, you can't spend – I don't think you should spend much time worrying about all of that because a lot of it won't go through. I mean, even in some of the more status places, some crazy legislation still doesn't go through. So right, but be careful. You know, we are in New Hampshire, and every bill – will wind up having a hearing. Which is a good thing, right? Which is a good thing. So it is important to know what is going to wind up having a hearing. Sure, sure. sure. But not so important for people outside of New Hampshire. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. So whether you want to talk about prohibition or the police violence that continues to be a problem, people are protesting about it, but you know, what good does that really do? What will these protests lead towards? Well, there's another story that I believe uh, Danica, no, or excuse me, uh, Daryl, you've got the story about police cameras from the Center for Stateless Society. They are speaking out apparently against police body cameras. Uh, the title is Police Should Be On, Not Behind Cameras. Let's find out what that has to say here in a moment, but first, your calls and thoughts. Mark is listening in Iowa. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mark. Yeah, say so, um I was watching on YouTube on these on these two particular um police brutalities that come to mind. Um one was of a guy, you know, he's got like a kind of a mohawk and they slam his head up against the wall and there's blood on the wall and then this other lady they push into a cell and you know, across the bridge of her nose or something and she's just bleeding all over the floor. Oh, I've seen and, that one, it's horrible. Yeah. The young lady. Yeah, I mean I mean uh it, yeah, I it, it made me cringe watching this, and, and I just, I don't know why. I can't for the life of me figure out why. Why it makes you cringe? Uh, no, no, why uh, why these things aren't at the front as opposed to, you know, uh, this Eric. I, I mean, I realize that, you know, this is in the news, but, like, these ones, to me, they just, they stick out so much more. They're so much more, uh, you know, violent and well, uh, Garner died. You know, the girl in the cell that you're talking about, I think, lived through that. So there's... Right. I, I think it like broke her nose and broke out 
most of her front teeth. Yeah. She was in bad shape. And no I, I do remember that was in the news. But that was like, what, a year ago or something? I mean, that's yeah. that's not a fresh video. And there's so yeah, many I, that I, are fresh. I mean, there's always, you know, next week we're going to have 10 new ones. I mean, it, they're, <laughs> they're, it's crazy. And those are just the ones that get caught on video. Well, yeah. And I mean, uh, I guess I, I listen to a lot of uh, talk radio just to jabber at myself while I work all day. But um, I just... I, I see all these, you know, these things that are, you know, it seems like they're buried, I guess I should say, you know, as opposed to, you know, is it, does it make, does it make mainstream news only when the person dies or, I mean, what's the criteria of, you know, I guess I'm, maybe I'm getting at, is there, is there a conspiracy here or something? I don't know. Well, and it depends on how you define mainstream news. It depends on if you uh, are referring to, oh, you know, it gets TV. mentioned in passing at the end of like a CNN report on police brutality. And then uh-huh. I, I always have to wonder the question of if something gets reported on, quote unquote, too much, people say, well, they're trying to focus on this and, you know, may, make you, uh, you know, not pay attention to something else that's going on. And if it doesn't get reported yeah. on enough, then they say, well, they're trying to bury it. Mm. So I, I'm going to ask you the question, since you've called in, Mark, how much should something be reported on so that it's not being over-reported or buried? Oh, God, I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess uh, I guess my, my, my thought there is, is it seems like there's – there's more brutality that's, you know, not seen mainstream than there is on the nightly news, which, you know, I can, I can see that, but you know, where they, where they broke this poor lady's nose, uh, you know, and this, and this guy that was obviously, well, I guess, I don't know, but he looked pretty intoxicated and stuff like that, you know, um, uh, well, maybe it's just, I guess, maybe it's just the news cycle and, and where we're at in the news cycle following Ferguson. I so guess here's I, what I, I really think. Yeah, I'll, just spe- I'll just go ahead and speculate here. I think that what's happened in the last several months has been that the news, the mainstream media, has not been able to ignore this stuff as easily. <laughs> and that's partially because there are protests going on. So the protest, yeah, yeah. while I while I generally am not a huge fan of it as a form of activism, I don't oppose them and I will participate in them. I just don't think they're the most effective thing someone can do. But they yeah. are something that people can do. And when people do it in, in enough of a numbers and consistently over time, it will generate news coverage. So I think that the fact oh. that there's, you know, there's some more level of outrage recently has led yeah. to more news coverage, which could lead to more outrage. Whereas usually okay. the news tries to, sh- to brush this stuff under the rug. Oh, I see. That's so, my I answer. Mean, like, yeah, I guess I was, uh, uh, you know, I guess I'll, I'll finish it. Yeah. That, um, I'm thinking through this while we're speaking, I guess. So, well, Thank you, Mark, for your call tonight, man. I do appreciate hearing from you. There's more coming up. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least $10,000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. 
According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mints, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't Tread on Meme, M-E-M-E, -E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value, and they look neat too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't Tread on Meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at DontTreadOnMeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't Tread on Meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. DontTreadOnMeme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. Whether you want to talk about prohibition or murderous cops, those are the uh, couple of the topics we've discussed here so far tonight. And you can join us via Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm on this 81st anniversary of the end of alcohol prohibition. Of course, uh, you can take control here. Uh, toll free number 855-450-FREE. And it's the holiday season. Tis the season for gift giving and buying and you know, you may be wondering, what do you get the kids in your life? I mean, yeah, okay, there's the obvious money, which yeah, that's always a good idea. But what about something that's educational and fun? I know it's hard to get those two things in the same package together, but I think you can manage it with In Freedom's Cause. It's actually audio theater. It's played out on the screen of your mind. And it's got big name actors like Joanne Froggett from Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd from Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keynes from Chronicles of Narnia, and James Cosmo of Braveheart. And like Braveheart, this is the story of William Wallace. But unlike Braveheart, this one's historically accurate. The kids in your life will love it. It's got a study guide, and it's a crash course in the struggle for freedom. Go to infreedomscause.com. There's a special offer for listeners of Free Talk Live. Use coupon code FTL, and you'll get the Family 4-Pack, which, from what I understand, actually has four copies of this In Freedom's Cause audio theater. So you get four copies for half off using our coupon code FTL at infreedomscause.com. I've listened to the entirety of it. 
and it was pretty entertaining. I've got to I've got to say it was well produced. The foley was very good. The sound effects, the voice acting, uh, was good, and the music was you know very cinematic. So check it out for yourself at infreedomscause.com. Don't forget coupon code FTL. As we go to Gary, listening in West Virginia, you're on Free Talk Live. Gary. Yes, sir. I was wondering if either one of you gentlemen was aware of the uh, killing in Ferguson here recently. This uh, young man, he's 32 years old. I heard this on another news talk show, but uh, he was 32 years old, had his fiance with him. He was going through town. Four men of color stopped him, beat the car with hammers. He got out to confront him. They killed this young man with hammers. Now, why isn't this? Have y'all heard anything about this, or are you aware of the story? Who? So who killed him with hammers? It was three black gentlemen, and they said a Hispanic. And this young man got out just to confront him. They killed him with hammers. And they went to the city and all this, and they said it was not a hate crime. I'm just wondering why this story has not got as much publicity as the others. Hmm. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, have you, it's... Heard, have you heard of it? No, I've not heard. Have of I, I have not. When no, did this happen? Okay. But the, you're not saying there was police uh, involved in this. This was just people no, killing people. No there, was, no, there was not police involved in it, but the police were aware of it, and they're not wanting to call it a hate crime. And if it's not a hate crime, what what is it? It's just not blown up as much as. The well, I don't know what a hate people. crime is. I, by the way, i got to let you go, Gary, your phone. It's it's all really hard to understand you, but thank you for the call tonight. Uh, I don't really agree with the idea of a hate crime. The, the concept. Uh, of I, a, I would say that any crime against another human being is, is a, a hate, hate crime. crime. Right. I, I'm, I just, you know, the idea behind a hate crime is that if you say you hate someone or insult their person in some way, you know, you don't like their hair color or their skin color or their sexual orientation or whatever, if you make some sort of indicator that there's something about the person who you're kill- in the process of killing or harming that you don't like, that somehow that makes the crime worse. That because you've got uh, eye makeup on the uh, Danica that, you know, I hate makeup. So therefore, if I were to attack you physically, that that would somehow be a more violent or dangerous or, de- you know, somehow it's a worse crime because the person has expressed some level of hatred for the the victim. And this I just is, think that's ridiculous. This is where I just say haters going to hate. Ian. Exactly. <laughs> so I just did a uh, web search for man killed by hammer in Ferguson. And it comes up with about 9 million results. So there's definitely stories out there about it. Uh, I, I don't think you could say that it's being buried or not reported on. Mm-hmm. The top couple of results are from Fox News, then a couple of stories from CNN, and a couple of other outlets. When on, did this happen? That's just on the front page. These stories are all from like four and five days ago. So oh, okay. So recent. Pr- pretty recent. But the reason why a story like that, as awful as it is, uh, doesn't get as much coverage, maybe, you know, nationally, perhaps, um, as much coverage as the cop killings, is because cop killings are more newsworthy. I mean, they, yeah, it's true that they happen more often probably now that we're aware of them due to the, maybe they're not happening, maybe they're not happening more often, we're just maybe more aware of them because of, you know, the fact that We've got the internet, and we can easily do searches. Yeah, we have cameras, we have YouTube, we have uh, most people have an easy access to show this evidence. Right, there's a lot more uh, availability of this information, but it's just more noteworthy when a police officer kills somebody because the police, you know, they purport to be your protectors. So on one hand, you've got them claiming to be protecting and serving. On the other hand, they're squeezing the life out of people. So Literally. yeah, so that's why. To me, that it's more newsworthy. What do you guys think? I completely agree. Yeah, I totally agree. I and mean, we, you know, how many people have grown up with these stories of, oh, you know, look at the look at the nice police car. He's going to help you, you know, cross the crosswalk, and you know, he's going to direct traffic for you, and mm-hmm. all, you know, and all these other great things that they do. And you know, like I said, we we grew up with these supposed, you know, honor our boys in blue, honor our, you know the blue and gold. And, you know, now we're seeing that these people really aren't here to protect you. They're here to enforce laws, and sometimes that means beating the crap out of you. You can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE, because what do you want? I mean, do you want national coverage of every murder? I mean, every time somebody gets beaten with a hammer, should that be nationally covered? I mean, murders happen 
all over the United States, all around the world, especially in larger cities. I mean, these are not uncommon things to occur, and I'm sure beatings with a hammer are just one of a variety of different ways in which those acts are engaged in. And I imagine some of them are more horrifying than that. So, so should it be that only the more horrifying murders are the ones that are covered? Where you know, if it's just a, a gunshot to the head, uh, the, you know, that's kind of typical. Maybe, maybe it needs to be something more, you know, sick. Or I'm not saying that that's not sick, right. but you know what I mean, like a butchering, a decapitation, something like that. A, you know, multiple or a violence against a woman. Uh, you know, it, it depends if, you, if it happens with you know, races involved or women, or it just seems like there's just much more attention drawn to it. Well, there's also a certain narrative, I guess you could argue, that some mainstream media has. And so that's why a story about a black cop or a, a, a white cop shooting a black person is more attractive to certain people in the mainstream media. Whereas, again, I, I agree with what uh, Eric Garner's daughter said, that you know, this is a power issue, and this is government agents, the police using force against people who otherwise should be left alone. They weren't harming anybody else. So, you know, you can't put all of the murders in the United States on the national news. You right. would it, it fill would be the impossible. national news. That would be all you would be reporting on is the various different murders out there. Or whatever the reasons were for them. 855 450 free. And there's more cop killings than can possibly be reported on national news so only some of them can get the play in the headlines and only and, some of them are recorded too and if you want to see more of it then just go to copblock.org follow their facebook page and there's countless examples eventually you'll get pretty sick of it it's free talk live this is dan pillard do you owe the irs money you can't pay are tax debts crippling you i've defended people from the irs for over 30 years I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Mom, I can't do my math homework. I just don't get it. I hate math. <sighs> I've always tried to be a good mother, but when it came to Jamie's math, I was at a loss. Then a friend told me about Math Made Easy DVDs. Concepts are simplified in an easy way to follow and review, and students can learn at their own pace in the convenience of home. Listen, in the frustration, call Math Made Easy. Call now, 1-800-USA-MATH. That's 1-800-872-6284. Or visit us at mathmadeeasy.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free to take control of the airwaves, whether you want to talk about prohibition or police abuse or anything else that happens to be on your mind. Just bring it up. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Uh, what about police cameras? We can talk about that on the way. The folks over at the Center for Stateless Society have an opinion piece, and Daryl will share some of that with us. With you in studio, you've got Ian. Daryl. And Danica. And if you care about online privacy, you really need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network, and they encrypt your online data. That means that your internet service provider will no longer know what it is you're doing online as soon as you start using ProXPN. You can go to ProXPN.com slash FTL to get started. Download their free software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users, setup's a little different for you, but it's pretty simple to get rolling with Linux. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. You can start there, but when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, you can privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites with their premium account. Plus, there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You get that premium account at a sweet discount by using code FTL50. FTL stands for Free Talk Live, and the 50 stands for 50% off the price of their annual account. That breaks the price down to around $5 a month, which is a great deal. But if you want an even better price, pay with Bitcoin for the annual account, and you'll save 62% when you use code FTLBTC. So there's two codes, one for those of you without Bitcoin, that's FTL50, and for those of you with Bitcoin, FTLBTC. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. As we continue here, we'll talk more about the idea of police cameras, body-mounted cameras. These have been proposed now as high up as the White House. So it's being. this is an idea being pushed, and normally if politicians are pushing an idea, it's usually a bad one. So is the idea of police cameras now being pushed by the top dog politician in the United States, is that a bad idea just because it's being promoted by the state? Um, we'll, I'd like to get into the story, but we've actually got James on the line in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live via Skype. Hello, James. Yes, commentator is better known for parroting the bromide that a prosecutor can get a grand jury to indict a ham sandwich. A what? Uh, like Daryl. A ham what? I'm speaking of you. You and your accomplices. No, you slurred, you slurred your speech a little bit. I was just trying to understand what you said there. A ham it's what? Skype. I'm pretty you sure all got berserk one. You all seem to be a, a, a tad bit berserk that the sandwich on offer was a white cop and the and the grand jury refused to bite. But Ian, are you with me? I'm right here. I'm not with you, but I'm right here. <laughs> if you, <laughs> Donica, if you want a good laugh, it's, it's by the Danica. way, check out right. Check out a uh, check out Stefan Molnu. On the YouTube tube, uh, get down to one Michael Brown's crap lyrics. That is a riot, I guarantee you. I'm sure but it is. But speaking of the truth, speaking about the truth about Ferguson, Ian, not that you actually care. I don't um, claim to know what the truth is. Do you? Yeah, I do. Okay. I know that. Were you there? Darren Wilson. I know that Darren Wilson, because he was attacked, uh, Michael Brown paid for it with his life. Michael, one Michael Brown, as the autopsy proves 
that he certainly didn't put his hands up and was certainly not shot in the shot dead in the back running away from a cop. That is a fact. Just as the jury that is multiracial, uh, you cannot suggest that they're racist as well unless they hate their own for not indicting I didn't suggest that. Cop. No, you haven't. No, of course you haven't. You have used a racist word earlier in the show in in uh, context of Ferguson and Darren Wilson having been given 500k by people that think that he was crucified in the media by the likes of people like Ian Freeman, Daryl W.P.U. Perry, and uh, uh, accomplices like Danica, who don't care about the truth, <laughs> but are only are so anti-statist. It's not funny. Oh, yeah. It's pathology it that you suffer from, Freeman. No, it's not funny. You don't care about the truth. You have these ridiculous anarchist uh, oh, if everybody, you're you're like just like I've said before, you're you're the New Hampshire version of the Islamic Free State Project. <laughs> the you Islamic know you're right. Free State Project is there such a thing? You're the New Hampshire version of it. You know you're right. You have your principles, and everybody else that doesn't agree with you is a statist, like you once. Speaking of name calling, uh, labeled me after you dumped my call because all I did was ask W. The silent type right next to you all of a sudden, where does he live? And he wouldn't dare answer that because it was in context of him being having to pay his registration like everybody else that is a grown man does. The zip pay lives his registration? Hampton. What kind yeah, of his registration? car registration. I'm his pretty sure he's driving a registered car. Daryl W.P. Perry knows what I'm talking about right now because this conversation only happened a couple of months ago and I don't think he smokes his well maybe he does smoke more dope than you maybe that's why I I'm have so not seen that uh, that transpire but nonetheless I mean you know you don't drive around for very long without having a car that's registered uh, because men right. with guns will right. pull you uh, over and you know shoot you if you don't pull over or run you physically off the road so I haven't seen that happen to Daryl so I'm gonna presume that his registration is up to date. Oh, really? All of a sudden? Because your neighbor narked on you, didn't you? Suggested that WPU Perry, right? Actually, the vehicle that I was convicted of operating that was not registered, I no longer own. So? You denied in front of the court of law that you didn't – you wouldn't tell the judge where you lived because you didn't want to pay your registration because you're such an anti-status type that you didn't want to have to pay your registration. Whatever. You stood up for a major principle. I don't think you understand really much about the, the whole car registration process. I don't think Daryl even owns – I mean, Daryl, you do you own that car? The truth. I, I no I longer own an automobile right. of any kind. He's driving a car that's registered, but he's not actually the registered owner of it. Let's and back that's up. The same thing. Company. The same thing's true with me. So Let's you know, maybe you should try learning a thing or two before you call in making you know wild sure. accusations. Making wild accusations. Daryl W. Perry denied where he lived in front of a judge, so he didn't have to pay the formerly owned car by him or whatever. Well, how it was. do you live somewhere if you don't actually? You know, how how can you live somewhere if you don't actually have a home? Leave aside these living in a bus that's in your parking lot uh, of your house. And that's not a home, but it is a home, but it's a bus that is a home. Uh, okay, I just want you to tell the <laughs> What's truth. What's the point you're trying to make? You don't care about the truth. You care about winning. You're like Charlie Sheen. <laughs> and by the way, prohibition, a remarkable thing about prohibition is a super majority of, your, of our former fellow Americans believe that people shouldn't have a right to drink alcohol. Do I think that was a disaster? Yes. But Finally, we agree on something. Thanks for the call. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Can you give some sort of analysis of what he was getting at there, Daryl? Okay, so last November I was pulled over for driving an unregistered vehicle mm -hmm. and also charged with being a resident of New Hampshire without fulfilling the obligations of residency. Basically, they want me to get a New Hampshire driver's license, even though I don't have all of the documents that they want that would allow me to get that. Mm -hmm. So I never got that. 
Uh, I was convicted. Were you ordered to get a New Hampshire driver's license? I was not. Okay. I, I was found guilty of being a resident without fulfilling the obligations, right. but the judge never ordered me to get a New Hampshire driver's That's license. That's interesting because they came after me with the same charge, dropped that charge before yes. I went to court, and then put me up to the DMV for an administrative hearing where I was ordered to get a New right. Hampshire driver's license. So your so, results were completely different from mine. Right. Completely different. I was convicted. Uh, refused to pay the fine, so next weekend, oh. I, I will not actually be here next Friday, oh. I will be in the Keen Spiritual Retreat for That's right. three days. You're checking in for a little vacay. Checking in at 2 p.m. <laughs> next Friday, and it's actually going to be the first days off that I've had in... Probably a year and a half, two years or better. Now, this is going to present a, an issue, Daryl. I mean, you've been recording the news seven days a week. For 300 for, and like five days, I think. It's almost a year now, and this is going to be your first three-day window. Uh, I've got somebody you gotta lined fill in? up. You've got to fill in? I've got to fill in. Is his name Derek J.? His name is very certainly Derek J. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm excited that he's coming back to uh, the news production business because he was doing At it least before for you days. were. We're coming up here on Free Talk Live in moments. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. Time and time again. You need to come here and help us. We need assistance. Please. Those we should be able to depend on let us down. Federal and state and local officials saying help is on the way. Well, the folks here in Bell Harbor say show me. Don't depend on the government to save you. Take action now so that you're prepared for the next disaster with MyPatriotSupply.com. Get the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more at MyPatriotSupply.com. Call 866-229-0927. We are hurting down here, and we need help immediately. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. MyPatriotSupply.com If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to may be even more nervous than you are. And the way things are now, your references have never been more important. Here are three tips. First, know that employers are checking. Every hire is under the microscope these days. Second, they won't just be checking references you provide. Figure that all of your ex-employers will get a call and be asked, would you hire him or her again? Again. Third, assume you will be Googled. So before you apply, remove all those party animal photos from your Facebook page. Even if you're not in the job market, effective communication skills have never been more important, with money and attention so scarce now. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day -day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here in these remaining moments to take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And freedomsphoenix.com is where to go to get uh, uncovered secrets and exposed lies. The readers at freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to Freedomsphoenix.com and you can sign up for their free daily dispatch there. Daryl W. Perry and Danica in the studio with Ian. Our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. You can get more of Daryl over on his website, fpp.cc. What will one find there, Daryl? They will find daily news and commentary weekly Articles that I write, sometimes I'll write something during the week, but generally original com- commentary and original content for me in written form comes out every Sunday. Mm-hmm. There's a multi-day per week podcast that I do, Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, comes out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and every Wednesday I'm doing an AMA, which is Ask Me Anything. So you literally can ask me anything. Send those emails to ama at fppradio.com. Very cool. Let's go to the phones, your calls and thoughts. If we get a chance, Daryl's going to tell us about why some people are saying police cameras are uh, not necessarily such a good thing. Let's go first, though, to Nathan. He's in Texas. Nathan, you're on Skype. Hey, guys. Hey there. Um, I wanted to follow up what Daryl was saying in the last segment. I actually looked up the uh, requirements. I guess these are not the requirement, requirements for residency. These are the requirements for a driver's license I'm looking at. And uh, there's a at least a dozen forms of documentation listed here that they will accept. Um, I'm curious, Daryl, is it possible that you could have gotten married and had a marriage certificate to, uh, to satisfy one of the requirements? Or uh, is there any way you could have uh, produced documentation for those requirements? Well, Daryl doesn't want to be a resident. Right. One, I don't want to be a resident, and the statutes allow for that. Uh, And one must be a resident in order to get a New Hampshire driver's license. Oh, is that the one that column that says residency, and then it's all things about like rental agreements and current check from a you know employer and that sort of thing. Right. That's if you wanted to be a resident, which you know I think should be an option. I think it should be something that you choose for yourself but right and i they asked, forced it on me i i asked the court is residency something that is chosen or can it be foisted upon someone no answer no answer from the court when i asked the question of the police officer the prosecutor said that's a that calls for a legal conclusion <laughs> and so in like the further <laughs> filing that i got to do to the court I said, well, police officers make legal conclusions all the time. Every time they arrest you. When they decide to give someone a ticket or arrest someone Mm -hmm. for an offense. So part of their job is to make legal conclusions and no response on that either. So just to be clear, uh, residency is something you apply for and then you give them some kind of documentation, presumably To support that claim, yes. Typically, yes. Residency is a legal term, and what it actually means legally, I don't know. You'll have to check Black's Law Dictionary or Bouvier's or whatever. But it's some sort of legal term that basically suggests that the government is, you know, that you've sort of become part of that organization, that you are part of the body politic to some extent, that uh, whatever protections they supposedly offer that you would receive. Um, I mean, they maybe. New Hampshire's constitution says that if they don't reciprocate with giving you protections, then your surrender of rights is void. 
It does say that, and in, in theory, they should also protect inhabitants as well. So I've yet to really determine what uh, the benefit is of being a resident, because in New Hampshire, you can also be what's called an inhabitant, and the definition of resident and inhabitant are usually the same legally. Right, except uh, a resident declares residency in another place for any purpose. Uh, well, a resident cannot declare... Well, a resident... <coughs> If someone is in New Hampshire as an inhabitant who declares residency in another place, they cannot be a New Hampshire resident. Right. Um, and again, why you would want to be a New Hampshire resident, I'm not really clear on that. Why you would want to be a resident anywhere, I'm not real clear because I can't determine that residency confers any benefit besides the so fact that no, you know, the cops won't no attack benefit. you. Yeah, if there's no benefit conferred and there's no legal requirement, then how does this come up? Do they just charge people with crimes and say, oh, if you know you don't do this, we'll charge you with a crime? Is that how it works? Basically, if— Yeah, they've charged both of us, uh, Daryl and I, with the same residency charge. Right. If they know that you've been in the state for you know some period of days and you don't have a New Hampshire driver's license— they will charge you with this. And when I contacted the ACLU, they were actually surprised that the city wasted time and money prosecuting me. Oh, I'm not surprised at all. You're an activist, and they are targeting, absolutely have no problem targeting activists. Right. No problem. But can at all. you be targeted again if, uh, oh, yeah. if they pull you over? Yes. I don't think they'll need to pull him over. They could walk up to him on the street and charge him with that again if they wanted to. Like they could determine In that theory. You, they could determine that you don't yet have a New Hampshire driver's license or whatever, and come at you again with that one. Right. Hey, thanks for the well, call, Nathan. I uh, appreciate it. Okay. Let's go on to Jared. He's in Ohio. You're on Free Talk Live. Jared, go ahead, sir. Hey, yeah. How's it going? Welcome. Um, yeah, I've been a big fan of the show, and I generally agree with all of you guys' opinions. That's why I listen because you seem like-minded. Okay. Uh, it's just recently I've had some questions with all the stuff that's come up in Ferguson and the police and, and that kind of thing. Is um, you you just seem very against the police, like as a whole? Am I am I correct in thinking that? Or well, I or can't speak I for uh, Danica or Daryl, but no, I'm actually in favor of the cops going after bad guys who actually you know hurt other people. I'm against the police when they hurt peaceful people. What about you? Yeah, and I, I remember a couple of weeks ago somebody had called in and asked the same question, and Ian, me and you both gave the a very similar answer of if police were only going after people that were you know causing victims, then I, I would have no problem with them existing. And the caller said, "Oh, so you're anti-cop," and that's not well, what that's was not, said at all. Yeah. What was said was. I don't like that police officers are arresting people that have not harmed anyone. Yeah, yeah I, like, uh, I saw the video of the guy in, uh, I think it was Georgia, that asked for the license and, and just, like, opened fire. Have you seen that video? Uh, you're talking about the so-called sovereign citizens where a, a man and his son shot up uh, with, you know, some sort of— Oh, no, this was— uh, No, a police, police officer fire. shot some guy. I, I think it yeah, was he, in he, South he Carolina. Yeah, the guy for— he, he, he said, it's in my truck, and he turned around. Yeah, yeah he literally really. just turned around to pick up the license, and the guy shot him. Well, yeah. He actually shot, like, four times. Thank God he's terrible at his job. But he struck the guy in the hip, and then the guy's like, what'd I do? And he was like, you dove in your car, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, he's like, I had to get my anyway. license. We talked about that on the air. It was yeah. crazy. Danica, you were going to say yeah, something? Yeah, so, like, that guy, he deserves to go to jail until they forget what he did. I mean— You mean the cop deserves um, to go to jail in that case? Yeah, yeah. the cop. But um, it just, I guess I got the impression you seemed just, you had just seemed very down on police as a whole. And I just, um, I, I recently got out of the military and I was a little sensitive to that because I heard so many people badmouth the military as a whole for the terrible things they did. And I joined right before September 11th and had no interest or desire to hurt or kill anybody. But I just became tethered into this terrible situation. And, you know what I mean? So when I'd see people just, like, demonize the military and everybody that's included in it, um, anyways, that's that's why I called, because it, it just seemed like you guys were um, sort of down on the police as a whole, and I just figured there's got to be a lot of good cops out there that just want to stop people. I don't from think there are people. a lot of good cops. Well, no, and, yeah, I'm uh, yeah, also— maybe, maybe a lot might be an exaggeration. Some, there's got to be some. Yeah, I'm with Ian and Daryl on that. I, you know, I think cops— 
police should go after the mm-hmm. ones that do violate property rights, the ones that, you know, are destroying or hurting other people. I don't think cops should be going after really silly things such as someone willingly, you know, smoking a piece of grass into his body. I mean, that that's just, you know, why are you wasting your time going after that? Well, it's I, easy. Uh, it's easy to go after a pothead. I mean, you go and you arrest people for pot or underage drinking and... You're not usually going to be dealing with somebody who's going to attack you in, well, maybe in some cases the drinking, but typically if you're just harassing college students and, and those are know, revenue generating. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm right. against cops that go after you know things, you know, silly things that that should really just not be an issue whatsoever. Well, that's why people don't like cops. I mean, that's why people don't trust cops. That's why people are afraid of the cops is because they know they are out to get them. I mean, the cops are out to find reasons to put you in handcuffs. And I want to like the police. I find the many of them here in the Keene area that I know, you know, pers- on a personal level, uh, from just being out and about and doing cop blocking quite a bit. Oh yeah, they they know you by now. And Ian. talking with them, they all know who I am. Um, you know, I find a lot of them very likable, like likable personalities, and I get along with them. It's just that you know sometimes they do stuff I don't agree with, like arresting peaceful people. So I hope that clears it up, Jared. We are out of time for tonight. But we'll be back tomorrow, and you can always call again about anything that's on your mind. We'll see you online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. We're talking about piracy. The Barbary pirates were attacking um, American merchant ships and taking the sailors into slavery. Yep. Um, which right. is a little worse than conscribing them like England was. England was just making them, you know, do a little bit of work. I mean, certainly the slavery, but to a much lesser extent. <laughs> um, when, Did they get the doubloons? That's what I want. When, no. <laughs> when somebody from the Sudan takes you into slavery, uh-huh. you're in slavery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's slavery in its uh, raw sense. Mm-hmm. So he sent over the Navy in order, um, was it? Well, that's the risk you take Aren't on you? the high seas. I'm trying to think Army uh dog. this this famous uh American pirate that I can't remember his name offhand. Blackbeard. Now now Redbeard. <laughs> no. Goldbeard. <laughs> <laughs> Maroon beard. <laughs> Free Talk Live. Seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.fm. If you wanna move to the free state you're looking for some real estate well i know a guy who's really great it's the realtor mark warden do you want a home with 20 acres a lakeside cabin any takers for renters buyers and sellers too mark warden is the guy for you porcupinerealestate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.fm. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, December 5th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.27 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,190 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $375. Antiwar.com reports with the elections now scheduled for March 17th, things are moving fast for Israel as various parties look to unite under joint list in an attempt to boost their number of seats. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu faces new challenges both internally and externally. With a new Jerusalem Post poll showing a 60% majority opposing Netanyahu retaining the premiership, former Likud minister Gideon Sa'ar is under growing pressure to try to take the Likud leadership spot from Netanyahu and potentially succeed him as premier. 
Meanwhile, the center-right seems to be in talks to form a Stop Netanyahu joint list, with Yair Lapid's party Yesh Atid confirming talks with Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman and former Likud official Moshe Kalon to bring their respective parties together for the vote. Further to the left, Labour and Marats have failed in their attempt to form a joint center-left list, though Labour may still prove to be a key part in the centrist coalition if one is possible after the vote. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports Attorney General Eric Holder on Thursday promised a full investigation into the choking death of an unarmed man by a New York police officer as protests flared for a second day over a grand jury's decision declining to bring criminal charges in the case. Reaction to Wednesday's decision did not indict Officer Daniel Pantaleo for his role in the videotaped confrontation that left 43-year-old Eric Garner dead, echoed a wave of outrage sparked nine days earlier by a similar outcome in the fatal shooting of an unarmed armed teenager by a policeman in Missouri. Pantaleo could still face disciplinary action from an internal police investigation. A departmental investigation will likely focus on whether Pantaleo employed a chokehold banned by New York Police Department regulations in restraining Garner as he and other officers sought to arrest him for illegally selling cigarettes on a sidewalk in July. In addition to triggering protests around the country, the New York and Missouri cases have reignited debate over U.S. law enforcement system widely perceived to unfairly target minorities. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, who took office in January promising to improve relations between minorities and police, told reporters on Thursday the city's thousands of patrol officers would undergo extensive training. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports, a New York appeals court denied a chimpanzee's claim to the full rights of human beings Thursday, finding the primate has no social duties. The court, in a unanimous decision, ruled against Tommy, a 26-year-old chimp, and lawyer Stephen Wise, president of the Non-Human Rights Society. Wise challenged the rights of Tommy's owners to keep him in a cage in Gloversville, New York. Chimpanzees are the closest surviving relatives of Homo sapiens, descended from a common ancestor four to six million years ago. They have been observed using tools, and members of the species have learned to communicate through sign language or by manipulating symbols. But the five justices of the appeals court in Albany found that they are not fully human. Weiss, in his complaint, charged that Patrick and Diane Lavery of Gloversville were effectively keeping Tommy in solitary confinement under conditions the primate would never have consented to. He did not charge the couple violated any animal welfare laws, instead arguing chimpanzees are so close to humans they they should be treated as legal persons. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Dick Cheney Vice Presidential Library opens in a pitch-dark, sulfurous underground cave, and a seedless watermelon is coming to grips with the fact it'll never be able to have kids. This is the Onion Week in Review. Following a litany of tragedies occurring over the past year, a report this week from scientists at Princeton University confirmed that 90% of the Earth's atmosphere is now made up of thoughts and prayers. Researchers confirmed that with the rise of tragic events occurring all across the world each and every day, the Earth's atmosphere is 7% nitrogen, 3% oxygen, and 90 percent emotional pleas begging for everything to be okay. In other news, a new study finds nothing that will actually convince you to change your lifestyle, so just forget it. UMass Dartmouth is beginning to regret offering a course in applied domestic terrorism, and a sparrow thinks it might have caught the bird flu after puking seeds all morning. Stay tuned after the video for a brief tear in the fabric of space-time, offering a glimpse at next week's Onion Review. And keep checking theonion.com for more. This is the Onion News Network. Soon, you will all live.
accepted by the rules of Islam. I have information that Muslims make babies much faster than Christians. Islam will impose its laws on the West, and those that oppose will have their tongues cut out. And your five-day weather forecast is 